warfare. Now, this is not just true of deliverance, but it's true of warfare as well in the life of an individual, in the life of a city, in the life of a state, in the life of a country. All right, we've got to bind these strongmen, regional strongmen as well. We've got, we got, we got an assignment here, all right? And so we can't just sit around. Right now is not the time for sitting around. And so you say, well, I'm just so tired. Well, let the Lord energize you. Let him quicken that mortal body of yours. That's what he said he'd do. So it's not time for just sitting around. Time for being involved in the plan of God. Uh, number two is another basic is using the keys of the kingdom. That's so important. Matthew 16 18 and 19, y'all be doing these keys of the kingdom every day, right? Not just once in a while. This is a daily uh, daily key that we need to use, and I'll talk a little bit more, but let's read the scripture, Matthew 16, 18, 19. And I say unto you, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So here we've been given keys. Keys represent authority. We use the keys all the days of our lives. We use these keys. And not, not only do we use spiritual keys, but we use physical keys. All of us have keys. If you live somewhere, you have a key. And how often do you use them? Most of you use a key every day in some form or another. You key to unlock a lock. You use a key to unlock your door. You use a key to loose your car or to bind your car up to stop it. Right? Loose when you want to go, bind when you want to stop. You loose the door, you bind the door. And so we can do the same in the spiritual realm, and we need to be doing it in the spiritual realm on a regular basis, right? You say, well, what do I need to bind? Well, how about problems? There's a lot of problems that are satanic, that are rooted in the, in the demonic realm, that you need to be binding those problems up. You need to be binding that activity. You know, a lot of the circumstances that you find yourself on in are because of what the what the demons have set up through the circumstances, right? Through the problems they set up in the circumstances that you need to be binding that. Okay, satanic activity in your life, your family's life, your church life, your job life, uh, your stuff is life. Things can be breaking down. You need to bind that destruction over your possessions. So the enemy can just enjoy destroying things in your life, so you're always fixing things. You don't need to spend all your time fixing things. And a lot of people have a, those demons that just get in their stuff all the time and breaking things, and you don't have time for that. If you need to be about the Father's business, you don't have time to just be fixing stuff all the time that is breaking and going wrong in your life, see? So you need to bind that destruction up off your property, and you need to bind sickness and poverty from attacking you, too, and keep you where all your time is spent where your next dollar is coming from. No, no. Jesus said that my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. You don't need to spend all your time worrying about where your next dollar is coming from because you can't really be about the Father's business if all you're doing is thinking of your money all the time and, and trying to have enough food on your table to pay and, and to pay your bills as well. You know, no, God wants us to trust him to pr make provision for us so we can be about the Father's business. Because really, you know, what are we here for on this earth except to do what, God's call what God has called us to do, right? And if God calls us to do something, then he's going to have to make provision for us to do what he calls us to do. And if we worry about it, what are we doing? We're giving place to the enemy. Okay, so we need to bind those strong men over these different things or areas of our lives, okay? And we need to bind the destruction, sickness, and poverty. Witchcraft activity, we need to bind that. Bind curses, break curses, bind and break them. Bind and break witchcraft activity. Bind and break the, the attacking of spirits in people when they are attacking you, your family. You see, when it concerns you, you have authority over other evil spirits in people. If it only concerns them and they want to let those spirits rule over them, really you can't violate their will. They could just suffer with their demons if they want to, right? But you can bind those spirits so that the individual can begin to have an opportunity to make the right choice as you intercede for them to say, I bind those spirits that are influencing so-and-so so that he can see clearly to, to receive the gospel if he is willing to do so, that he would do so. You can go to war that, that way. But as far as uh, you just stopping all the demons in their life from working because they've given them place and want them there and they're not believers, uh, well, we really don't... Uh, we can't go against their will. If they will to have those demons, then they're going to keep them. But if it concerns us, then we need to stop it, right? We need to put a stop to it where they're affecting us because we have authority over anything that concerns us, all right? So we can go to war on that behalf. Praise God. I'm glad it, it, it's what you what you need him today. Praise God. Hallelujah. That, that encourages me to see that it's encouraging you. 
But, you know, you can bind those spirits so that the individual can have opportunity to make that right choice because so many people, uh, they'll never make the right choice unless somebody goes to war for them because so many are blind today and they cannot see their bondage. They just don't see. And remember, it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So we're not wrestling with people. We're wrestling with demon spirits that are that are keeping people in bondage, right? And so people are under demonic influence and control today, and we need to bind that influence and control that is over them and not not uh, not realize, realize that it's not the person that we're dealing with. We're dealing with what's controlling the person. So what are we to do then? Well, let's go over and look at Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah 51. Let's, uh, let's read there, verses 20 through 23. Jeremiah 51, if you look at these up, if not, you can look it up later. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. Okay, we're talking about kingdoms of darkness here. All right, that's the kind of kingdom that God is going to use us to bring down, right? Kingdoms of darkness, hierarchies of darkness, and, and you know, set up uh, uh, strongholds of the enemy. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider, and with thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces the old and the young uh, man and the maid. So he's going to use us uh, to do these things. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman, the yoke, his yoke of oxen, and with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. So we are his weapons of war, we're his battle axe, we're his weapons of war. Now what happens if you refuse to fight today? Well, you get blown away. You live a weak Christian experience with many defeats, losses, and failures, and, and the enemy just takes advantage of you. So the Bible says uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge, so the enemy is going to just take advantage of you. You have to keep fighting. I know it's hard sometimes because you get attacked sometimes because the enemy wants to... Uh, to uh, to get you out of the fight, but I want to look at something a little bit of depth tonight, because too many let various spirits of the fear family block them and hinder them, sabotage them, and stop their forward motion in the Lord. And I want to talk about that. We need to talk about that because this fear is a a prevalent spirit in the age today. And I want to describe it a little bit more to you. And see, one thing you need to realize about the fear family is that demons in this family are afraid. And, you know, a lot of people don't think that. They think, oh, these demons must be really bold. No, these demons are afraid, you know, because demons are what they are. Let's, let's look at Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 24, verse 18. 24, verse 18, and read a scripture. And it should come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of fear shall fall into the pit. Have you been fleeing from the noise of fear? Listen, if you're doing that, you're going to fall into a trap that the enemy's laid. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. Now listen to me. This is important stuff here. When you give place to spirits of fear, you fall into what they have laid for you. A fear trap, a fear snare, a place that keeps you trapped, that keeps you, like, tied up. That's right. There's a lot of Christians today that are tied up. You can't move ahead. You're like a paralyzed. You're like you 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 can't move. You're you're like locked up. Some, someone locked you in a cage. Spirits of the fear family are afraid themselves. By the way, and when when you have these spirits, you feel what they feel, which is what they are, right? You when you have a spirit of fear, you feel the emotions of fear. You feel the feelings of fear because that you're feeling what that demon in you is. See, demons of this family are afraid, and you will feel their emotions. You will feel their thoughts. You will feel their feelings. And fear will produce more fear. Okay? Fear will produce more fear. Did you know that? Just like if you have a, a, a skunk and a skunk together and mating, they can't produce a rabbit. Right? When they, They're only going to produce another skunk. Or two bears, they're not going to produce a squirrel. Each thing produces after its own kind. So fear will produce more fear until you're swirling in fear. If you're giving place to fear, more fear will be produced because fear produces after its own kind. They'll be bringing more fear demons because they have a right because you're you're giving place to the fear in the first place. Okay? 
So it'll be a cesspool of fear before too long. And that's why you must not give it place. It will snowball. You'll be trapped by it. You'll be paralyzed by it. The Bible says the devil walketh about like or as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, when do lions roar? You know, think about this. It's, you know, a little bit of different thought on this. When do lions roar? They don't roar when they're hunting or they're about to attack. You ever watch your little kitty cat when it's about to attack a, a toy or something that you're pulling around? You know, it doesn't, it doesn't roar then. <laughs> it's real stealthy, man. It gets real into stealth mode, and it's crawling up mode. It's like crawling over, getting ready to jump and pounce on that thing. It's not roaring at that point. Same thing with a lion. It's not roaring when it's getting ready to attack. And the Bible says that the devil walketh about as a roaring lion. So when do lions really roar? Well, not when they're hunting. Not when they're hunting. No, they roar when they feel afraid or when they're threatened. So the devil roars to scare you and put you in fear because the demons are already in fear. They're ridden with fear They because that's what they operate by. They don't operate in faith. They operate by fear. That's what Satan's main tool is today is fear. Fear is one of his main tools. It's not the only one, but certainly pride is one too. But he is fear-ridden. The demons are fear-ridden. Yeah, demons of fear are riddled with fear, for they are fear. And if you are something, that is what you are. In other words, if you are something, that's what you are. If you're human, you're human. So if it's a demon of fear, it is fear. It's a demon of lust, it is lust. A demon of greed is greed. So you need to learn to recognize that even a tiny amount of fear in your life, you need to recognize it and attack it with boldness, with an aggressive all-out attack. Don't entertain fear, or or it will just move on in. That's right. Have you ever been friendly to certain people? You know, if you show any kindness, they'll just take advantage of it. You know, oh, how many times have people had? Uh, oh, they befriended people who were in need and. When they befriended them, before long, they were moving into their house, and they were eating up their house and home and food and everything. <laughs> right? That's right. That's right. That's, that's the same with fear. You give it an inch, it'll take a mile, as the old saying goes. You know, we've been given three great forces in addition to the blood, the word, and the name to overcome fear. Remember Second Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, sound mind. These are three great forces. There are spiritual forces as well that we've been given to overcome fear. And so we see these three powerful forces. What are they? Power, love, a sound mind. Three things that people can overcome with fear uh, uh, and and people that are are ruled by fear, they're usually overcome uh, by fear. They're usually lacking these three things in their life. They're lacking power because if you have power, over something that that's that something can never overcome you even though it may try to it may attempt to but if you have power over something it can never overcome you right can never overcome you because you have power over it well see god gave us power right so you have power so fear doesn't (laughs) unless you let it unless you give it play okay and so so if you have power over something that something will never be able to overcome you even though it will try, it will attempt, you are fearful because you often feel powerless against whatever fear that you're being overwhelmed by. When you feel powerless, you're, you're, you're overrun by these things that you feel powerless against. But if you walk in power, you won't be overrun by those things. Okay? See, God has given us power over fear to dominate it and to cast it out. You've been given power over all the power of the enemy. So what is there to fear if you walk in your power? (laughs) Nothing, right? So if you walk in love, fear cannot abide there for what is love. Well, first of all, God is love. If you walk in love, you're walking in God. And perfect love or God love cast out fear, as it says in 1 John 4, 18 and 19. See, so if you're walking in the perfect love, you're walking in God love. And if you're walking in God love, then that fear doesn't even have a leg to stand on. Because you're walking in God. You're walking in the very anointing and presence and power and presence of the Almighty One. Because God is love. And perfect love cast out fear, right? And so if you're walking in fear, you have no revelation of perfect love. You instead have spirits ministering to you of guilt and condemnation and fear of judgment 
and torment because it says in First John 14 and 19, uh, you know, that fear has torment. So when there's fear abiding in you, then you are being tormented with guilt and condemnation because you feel that you deserve to be punished for your sin. You're not accepting the full uh, gift of what Jesus did on the cross. And these demons are winning in you because they're making you get under condemnation and making you afraid of judgment. Oh, God's going to get you. God's going to judge, judge you. God's going to torment you. God, God's mad at you. God's going to uh, get you. He's going to cause bad things to happen in you. These are the words of demons, you know, because fear has torment, and they torment you, and they torment you day and night. Some people are tormented day and night with these kind of words, that you're just uh, going to bust hell wide open. <laughs> you think God is disappointed in you, or he's mad at you. See, fear will cause you to think in this manner, because fear is fearful, and it feels fear all the time, because it is fear, and fear has torment, right? Fear has fear of torment, fear, fear that judgment's coming on you. But we're not appointed under God's wrath, the Bible says, right? We're not appointed under God's wrath. So what are you getting in that kind of fear about? What are you giving place to that for? Jesus bore the penalty on the cross of our sins, so we're not appointed to God's wrath. The wrath is for those who don't accept Christ, those who don't make Jesus their Lord and Savior. But see, that's not what spirits of fear will tell you. Oh, you're doomed, you're damned, you're going to hell. You're so bad. There's so much wrong with you. See, fear has torment, the Word says. But perfect love has no torment. Therefore, perfect love says you are accepted in the Beloved. You are, you are blessed going in and coming out. You're God's chosen son or daughter. See, perfect love says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. And that perfect love is found in God's Word, revealed by His Spirit, a sound mind. This is a mind that is spiritually healthy. The mind is the battleground, and a healthy mind is one that has gained and kept the victory. Received. So we're talking now about a sound mind. Sound mind, power, love, and a sound mind. This is a weapon, mighty weapon against uh, fear. The mind that is spiritually healthy, the mind uh, that is, is set apart unto God. All right? And uh, a sound mind rules with authority over evil entities. It's a mind filled with the fruit of the Spirit. A sound mind is a mind full of self-control, the temperance. One of the fruits of the Spirit. In other words, it's a Spirit-controlled mind. One that walks by faith, not by feelings and by sight. So when you walk in power and love and a sound mind, you will not walk in fear. Because God gave you these. These three things against fear. And demons gave fear. Which is more powerful, fear or power, love, and a sound mind? Well, Jesus, of course. And what God gives is always able to overcome what Satan gives. If it's believed and walked in through faith. So whatever God gave you, if you'll walk in faith in it, you'll overcome fear. You'll overcome Satan. You'll overcome those dark forces that are attached to your soul and your flesh. Powerful God-given forces to overcome all fears. Amen? Well, let's start overcoming them. What are we waiting for? What are we sitting back and waiting and being whipped on and being beat on? Let's stop that being beat on. Let's, let's possess our land. Well, we're third heaven warriors tonight. So, yeah, I know that Jesus has defeated Satan and his forces, but they have certain right to trouble the earth, and they're troubling the earth right now. They're causing great, great distress on the earth. They're causing great uh, problems in the earth today. Why? Because, well, the defeat has to be enforced. Otherwise, the defeat will continue unabated. See, just because Jesus defeated him on the cross, it doesn't mean that the enemy is going to stop doing what he's doing because God gave us the authority over the enemy, see, and it has to be enforced on him for him to stop doing what he's doing. See, just because we pass a law and make something illegal doesn't stop some people from doing it, right? The law officers have to forcibly stop them and enforce the law on them. Well, you and I are the law enforcement officers of the third heaven today to enforce Christ's victory on the demons and darkness and devils out there here in the earth and in the second heaven where he thinks he has dominion, but God given us authority there as well because he's given us power over all the power of the enemy, it says in the Bible. But through Jesus, we got it all back because, you know, Satan still thinks he has dominion because it was given to him by Adam, but we got it all back through Jesus and we need to use it. We now have dominion in the earth, full dominion. We need to use it. We need to use it. 
There'll be many times when you must stop all that you're doing and just wrestle, or you'll be whipped on, or you'll lose ground, or you'll not step ahead. The enemy forces will ground you, will stop you. They'll ground you to a halt. You must not let that happen. You need to stop everything and take out time for be a third heaven warrior. Amen? you got to exercise God-given God given authority. Proverbs 20, verse 18. Let's go read another verse here. Proverbs 20, verse 18. 20, verse 18, it says, Every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice, make war. With good advice. This is a guideline to warfare. Where does that good advice, where, do, where does a person get good advice? Well, you got to ask yourself, what's good in, in this world? Well, there's none good but God, the Bible says. So where does one get good advice? Well, you get it from God. You get it from His Word. His Word is good. If God is good, then His Word is good, right? And, and He can only give good advice because God is good. Therefore, God gives good advice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, so where do we get good, good advice? We get it from God. God is good, and any, any of God's Word is good. His Word is good, it's excellent, it's perfect, it's alive, it's a living Word, sharper than any two-edged sword, the Bible says, Sharp, piercing to divide of soul and spirit. Hey, yes, Hebrews 4.12 is that. It's a living Word. And His Word is the power to get whatever that Word says to get it to, into existence. Just in the, in the speaking of that Word and the belief of that Word, within that Word is the power to see that thing come to pass and to see it when we believe it, to see it manifest. See, the Word, the blood, and the name are your primary weapon. And, of course, the other uh, we talked about, a sound mind, power, love, these fall under these headings. Many things fall under these headings, such as praise and worship, casting out demons, which often need to be done not just to people, but you need to do it to localities. You need to do it to buildings. Sometimes it's necessary to do deliverance on a thing because spirits inhabit the thing for one reason or another. They have a right to inhabit the thing, or maybe they're going to bring a trap into you because of the thing. You know, if you have dream catchers, you 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 got spirits inhabiting that thing. If you have them in your house, you need to get them out. Things in your house that spirits are inhabiting today that are bringing an evil presence in your house, you need to get it out. But the keys, the keys under the Word, and the name, and the speaking, blessing, to reverse the curse. These are important. We need to use the keys, you know, to unlock the Word. Uh, we need to loose the Word of God, okay? We need to loose the Word of God on the enemy. We need to loose the Word of God on our situation, okay? Because we are warriors of the third heaven. We are seated in heavenly places right now in Christ Jesus spiritually right now. That is where we are. That is our citizenship. The Bible says we are citizens of heaven. That means we are citizens of another realm. We're citizens of another dimension right now, not some day off in the sweet by and by. Right now we are uh, possessors of the things of the spirit realm. Therefore, we can bring the things out of the spirit realm into the dimension of this world that we live in now and see the manifestation of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we doing that? Oh, yes. Are you God's enforcer? Uh, you can go and enforce the cross on the enemy, and what, what happened on the cross 2,000 years ago can be brought into physical manifestation right now, and the demons cringe, and they fear that you might actually do that to them. They're afraid of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can bring about change in your city, in your land, in your family, if you're willing to fight against the strongholds there. And many strongholds are generational strongholds that have been there for hundreds of years. But if you're willing to stand up against it, you can bring that stronghold down. Many strongholds that must come down out there. Are you going to be the warrior that brings it down? You can be. Many are simply held by the power of words. Words have been spoken. And, and, and released with power to demons that have kept something in place for perhaps generations. Words can become strongholds. Oh, this place is too hard. It's been spoken for years. It's too hard. It's too hard. It's too hard. It'll never change. Well, I bind that. You need to speak it is change it in Jesus' name. And I break that lie, that curse, that it's too hard. It's not too hard for God. There's nothing too hard for God. You can't think that. You can't think that. If you think that way, then you're thinking that God is limited. But God is not limited. God is unlimited. 
Nothing too hard for God. Is there anything too hard for God? There's nothing. Speak right in Jesus' name. Speak word in Jesus' name. Speak good, because, you know, the word is good. Hey, let's read another scripture. Let's go over to Jude, chapter 3. I mean, Jude, verse 3. There is no chapter 3, right? That's like going over and reading Hezekiah 5.1. If you can find that, read it to me, would you? Hezekiah 5.1? <laughs> all right, Jude 3. <laughs> Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. It was once delivered. Does this mean you should lay back lazily? And uh, just, no, that's not what it says. It doesn't say lay back, lazily contend. No, it says earnestly contend with endurance and fervor today. There are strongholds of religious tradition. There are strongholds, demonically built strongholds. There's upbringing strongholds that have come up through your upbringing, uh, through your family line that must come down. They must come down. They must come down. And they're held in place by words of family members or generational words of people that have spoken it for so long. They have brought it into place, and it's become a spiritual reality because of the dindians of darkness that have brought it into reality because of words that have been allowed to spoken under the influence of demons because their will was in agreement with their words. What words have you spoken that have entrenched demons deeper in your own life today? Do you self-curse yourself? Have you basically just opened a door by your word that said, come on in and bring your buddies, to, uh, you know, bring your old buddies? No. Have you said that to demon spirit? Listen, is it any wonder why demons are so big on our words and trying to influence what we speak? The Bible said you're snared, you're trapped, you're infested by the words of your mouth. You're snared by the words of your mouth, so you're trapped, you're infested. You get a demon infestation by the words of your mouth. Demons are released and they enter by the words we speak. Oh, I'm catching a cold. Well, a sickness spirit is waiting. Oh, I'm so stupid. Well, a stupid demon just got permission. Oh, I'm such a jerk. Well, a jerk demon has been energized when you said that. Oh, I'm worthless. I'm so worthless. A worthless demon has been sent your way. Do you see it? You gave permission to what you're presently being plagued by, by the words of your mouth. Let's stop and cancel some words today, saints. Let's stop it right now and cancel. Just say it right now. I renounce and break every self-spoken word curse over myself right now in Jesus' name. Say that over yourself. And now, and, and I cancel their assignments. Be specific. Cancel the specific assignments, the ones that you can remember, and cancel them right now. Because you need to realize that, you know, through influence of the enemy, so often you have been your own worst enemy. Like that little... A uh, cartoon character said, I've met the enemy, and the enemy is me. Yeah. Well, yeah, you've, you've invited visitors in who do not have your best in mind. And your mouth is a powerhouse. <laughs> so use it according to the owner's manual, and you will win. You use it inappropriately, and it will trap you. It will bring you into a, a trap and a snare. All right? So listen, it's time to wake up in these areas. It's time to uh, be strong in these areas and stop this because, listen, words have tremendous power and there are strongholds through your own words that have been created for you by opening the door, strongholds in your own life. Listen, we've got to start tearing a stronghold down because we're third heaven warriors today and we've got to tear down those strongholds in our lives, in our own lives, so we can start tearing them down for other people and in our, in our uh, other situations and circumstances and cities and families that, we, that we're part of that, oh my, that the enemy has built such strongholds in them. We've got, we got to get our own life in order more and more and more and get those spirits out of us so we can begin to go to war on the behalf of others. And I'm not saying wait till you get yourself all cleaned up either to go to war or to be a leader. I'm telling you, just get started. Just get started, you know, because God has no perfect vessel to use. He uses uh, whom he has, and all of us have demons still that we're getting free from. It's a, pro uh, a progressive walk that we're walking in. It's little by little we take, take out the enemy and we possess the land. But if you all waited to do your ministry or to step out and attack the enemy and, until you were all cleaned up totally, uh, listen, you'd be waiting a lifetime because we're, we're a work in progress. You know, we're just continually being uh, worked on and changed and made more like Jesus from glory to glory to glory. 
So don't wait for that. Just start getting, start the process, start getting your deliverance, and then go to war. Listen, if you find yourself getting hit real hard in some area, then realize maybe you got a lot of demons left in that area, and you need to go to war on that area that you're getting hit so hard in, because maybe you still got some stronghold demons there in your own life. But hey, don't let that stop you from warring against the enemy. Just go to war in that area, in your own life, as well as what you're doing outside your life. See, there are things such as demonic walls in our lives that Satan has set up, and it seems we cannot get past them. Seems like, whoa, we hit those walls every time we try to move. And uh, But no, not so according to Scripture, though. The Bible says I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. So we need to begin to do that. We need to begin to do so we can run through that troop of the enemy. Oh, he may have a whole lot of demons in front of us and our goal and where we're headed. But, you know, the Bible says we can run through that troop. So as we're running through, we're slashing them with the sword of the Spirit, we're wiping them out. We're slashing them all over the place. And we're leaping over those walls that they built there. They thought they could hold us in, but no, no, through Jesus I run through a troop and leap over that wall. <laughs> and we need to begin to do so. Okay? Because we, we, we're not those who are, who, who are wiped out. No, we're the ones who are going to do the wiping out. We're the ones who are going to judge angels, the Bible says. We're going to judge angels. So if, we, if we're going to judge angels, then it's time to start acting like who we are and living like who we are today, okay? See, here, here's the calling of the saints, of God, of the local church, and of the Most High God. This is the calling of, our, of, the, of the saints, and yet so few are fulfilling it, even the first part of it. Instead, they're just, uh, they're just hiding in their little churches today and say, come quickly, Lord Jesus, you know, hurry up and rapture me out, or else they're just caught up in compromise in the world, and they don't want Jesus to come quickly. They're busy. They're busy feeding the flesh and doing carnal things and building carnal ministries and, and uh, you know, just making a fortune for themselves, or they're caught up in lust, or they're caught up in all these sidetracks of Satan. So let's go to Psalm 149 and see what really God has called his church to be doing. This is really what he's called us to be doing. And this is what we need to be doing. Not, not wasting a whole bunch of time here doing all these little fruitless things, fruity and fruitless things that people do, right? Psalm 149, 6 through 9, says here, Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. Well, first of all, have you praised God today? Well, if not, that's too long. You need to be praising him every day. In fact, the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always, not just once when you feel like it on Sunday or, you know, or when things are going all your way. It doesn't say that. No, it says let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand, which is the Word of God. So we don't ever put these things down. We keep it in our hand. We keep the high praises of God in our mouth. And we execute to execute judgment upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains, and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. So this is what we're called to do. Are you, are you praising God daily? We start there. Start by praising God. Are you binding up the kings of darkness? This is all spiritual warring. This is all done from our position, seated in Christ Jesus in the third heaven. It's an honor to do these things. And if we do them, we shall receive honor and blessing in our lives. Okay? We, we, we shall receive honor and blessing. God blesses his children. He blesses his mighty warriors. So it's an honor to do these things. And if we refuse, we're going to remain trapped in a measure of darkness in our lives. We need to march forward and daily take our keys and get up in the morning, open the way before us with binding and loosing. Have you ever thought about that? Really, you, you prepare the path of the day when you use your keys. Just like when you leave the house, you have to open the door with your key or, you know, unlock it from the inside, actually, which you uh, can unlock. Some, some doors you still have to unlock with a, with a key to get out of them, too. But anyway, you use your key, you get out of a door, you go unlock your car, use your key again, turn the engine, you loose that car, and begin to run, and you move forward into the path of your daily life. Well, just like... In a daily life, to move forward, we have to take up our keys, get up, 
in the morning, open the way before us with binding and loosing and putting the angels to work and give them so much work to do that they are not going to be sitting around all day wishing and hoping and praying to God that you will activate the angels and give them something to do. We don't need angel, our, our angels just sitting around. We need to walk by faith so that our angels have plenty to do. That's right, using the keys, binding and loosing, putting those angels to work so they have so much work to do that God will send you more angels to help you out. You know, you get as many angels as you need. If you're not doing much, you're not going to have many angels around. <laughs> but if you're doing a lot, if you're making a difference in attacking the enemy, God's going to send you more angels. He'll send you whatever is necessary to get it, get it done. Amen. He'll say, hey, look over there. That's old Joe over there. Old Joe is really active. He's active with his faith. He's he's doing the enemy damage. I'm going to send him some more angels. Let's get him some more angels up in there. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, listen, you could have more angels. That's not a problem. God will send you some. He'll send your area more angels. He'll send you your home more angels. He'll send you more angels for your family. If you'll believe, if you'll do warfare, if you'll fight the good fight of faith there, he'll send you more angels. Amen? This is our assignment. To fight until he comes, not just lay back and say, oh, come quickly, come quickly, Lord, get me out of here. I, I just can't take this old wicked world anymore. Hey, the world's just going to keep on getting wicked. Just going to keep on getting more wicked. It's going to keep on getting darker. It's not going to get any better. You think it's going to get better? You're in a fantasy world. The Bible says the wicked will continue to do wickedly and grow more wicked. But the righteous are going to shine brighter and brighter until the full day, the day of his return, the day of his manifestation to the earth, right? But in the meantime, it's going to get darker, and we live in a dark world. Therefore, we have got to take up our assignment and fight the good fight of faith until he comes and recognize who we are and act like it and live that way. It's our last day's assignment. It's our high calling in Christ Jesus. So listen, how do you want to go out of this world anyway, Saint? You want to go out in victory or just one of those that, you know, oh, hold the fort, the Lord's coming someday. I just got to hold the fort, hide out in here, and hope he comes soon and gets me out of this mess. You know, no, or do you want to be just in defeat? You want to go out in victory or defeat, in fear or in faith? For too long, your besetting sins have beset you and ruled you. Time to take your position above them and rule over them. That's right. It says we're to rule over sin. We're to rule over these things. Uh, yeah, it's a battle, but it's one that we can win in Christ Jesus. There is hope. There is a Savior who has conquered darkness. And you know what? We're in him today. We're in Christ Jesus. You know, that's where we live. That's our position. We're in Christ Jesus right now. That, we're accepted in the Beloved, he said. You've been accepted in the Beloved, and therefore you're in the Beloved. You're in Christ Jesus. The Bible says you're joint heirs with Jesus Christ, see? And the demons are not joint heirs with Jesus Christ. They're joint heirs with Satan, <laughs> the god of this world. And so, hey, listen, they're, they're going where their god goes. And their god, we know his assignment. We know he's assigned to uh, the, the, the lake of fire, the bottomless pit. We know that he, he's, he's assigned to darkness forever. But not us, no. We're, we're joined as with Christ. Whatever Jesus has is ours right now. And so we need to begin to act that way, talk that way, think that way, function that way, and, and speak that way. You know, if you're speaking what Satan's kingdom says, then you're speaking in alignment with a kingdom that you're not really a part of. See, when you give place to fear and say things that fear said, you're speaking in alignment with the wrong kingdom. You, 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 you're giving place to this, this fearful lion that's walking about as a roaring lion. He's, he's not really a lion, but he's walking about as one roaring, you know, because he's afraid, see? And so, therefore, you, you're giving voice to their kingdom. Therefore, you're giving place to their kingdom. So we got to watch our tongue. we got to watch what we say. we got to speak in alignment with the third heaven. And, and the third heaven is revealed by his word. The Word comes out of the third heaven, right? The Word comes out of the throne of God. Therefore, we speak in alignment with what comes out of the throne of God instead of what comes out of the throne of darkness. See, because so many believers today, so many even in ministry today, are speaking in alignment with the throne of darkness, and they've embraced little things out of darkness and brought them in and made them their reality and called it God. We cannot call the things of darkness throne the things
things of God. We cannot call the things that come out from the throne of darkness the things of God. We must call the things that are of God the things of God. We must call, uh, you know, white, white, and black, white. I mean, black, black. You know, what's white is white, and what's black is black. We cannot be calling good evil and evil good. That's what the world's going to do. That's what many ministries are doing today is embrace things and things, quote, sneak into the church that are things from the kingdom of darkness and now are being embraced as the angel of light because we know that Satan's going to appear in these last days as an angel of light when he's when he's nothing but an angel of darkness right a denzian of darkness and he's going to try to appear that way and fool a whole lot of people but we can't accept that we got to see things for what they are we got to have uh be living out of that third heaven enough that we recognize what this little dark thing is doing and how he's infiltrating the churches and the and the, and the christian groups today and bringing in his little darkness amen Oh, hallelujah. i got to stop somewhere. i got to bring in, bring this one down for landing here. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father, that you've called us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your marvelous light, Father, and that we're, we're living in that light kingdom right now. We're living in that bright kingdom right now, and, you know, we... We've not seen what all it's going to be, but we know that, uh, Lord, what you have before us is, is glorious. And so, Father, right now, in the meantime, before we graduate from this wicked world into your glory forever, uh, Lord, we need to take the land. We need to possess the land. We need to do exploits. We need to occupy until you do come. We need to take out the enemy fortresses and strongholds that have resisted the gospel. Like Paul said, pray that the gospel will have free course. Well, Lord, we have to pray. We have to do warfare that the gospel of the kingdom will have free, free course, that you will use things that will seem like, oh, my, how could God ever do that? Uh, you'll do things that will amaze us, Lord. You'll do things that are, that are truly awesome. So, Father, we are looking to you right now to do great and mighty things in this time that we live in. And we just shake off the, the dust off of us. We shake off the, the dirt and the filth and the demons that have infested our lives in the name of Jesus, and we do warfare against them until they go. And whatever amount of deliverance is necessary, that's the amount we'll do, Lord, uh, until these things are all out of our lives. Uh, uh, however long it takes, little by little, we will possess this land. We will defeat the besetting sins. We will defeat every wicked work and every wicked device that has come against us because we have the authority to do it. And, Father, you've called us to do it. You've called us out of darkness. So, Father, thank you for blessing your people and raising them up to be mighty warriors in this hour. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen powerful message tonight brother Kyle praise, praise God if you're just tuning in you want to go back and listen to this one it's going to be in the archives later we've got Pastor John Kyle on right now with the with us from Billings Montana brother Kyle we're going to take a break but before we do we're we'll going to the phone lines I want you to tell people more about your ministry how they can support it and uh, reach out to you oh yes our website is theoasisplace.org theoasisplace.org I'm a pastor, been pastoring for, I guess, 30 years now, and doing deliverance ministry for 29 years now. And uh, so we've seen a lot of demons flee, and we've seen a lot of warfare over the years. But, yes, uh, you go to our website, order material, or you can support the ministry there, or you can email me at theoasis1 at localnet.com, theoasis1, the number one, at localnet.com, or you could write to us uh, a letter or a gift of support, whatever you choose, at uh, the Oasis Church or Pastor John Kyle at P.O. Box 50162. That's P.O. Box 50162 in Billings, Montana. That's Billings, Montana, 59105. It's a zip, 59105. Or you can come to church if you happen to be in this cold area, but I would recommend it uh, right now because we are 15 below tonight, and it's quite cold. Uh, but uh, the church That's is cool. located at 2102 Old Harden Road, 2102 Old Harden Road in Billings, Montana. We meet Sundays at 1030 and 7 p.m. on Thursday. Love to see you there when it's warmer, probably. All right. God bless you. Thank you. That is cold. 15 degrees below zero? Oh, my goodness. Yes, sir. Whew. Oh. Lord, have mercy. Not going to happen in Las Vegas. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> Not 15 below, but I'll tell you, it's been cold. I had to put on some gloves yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I was very amazed at that. And, and uh, 
We're going to go to the phone lines here in a minute. We're going to take a break. If you need prayer tonight, get on the phone line. We're going to open it up right now. God bless you. We'll be right back. To talk with Omega Man, dial area code 917-889-2745 and press option 1 on your phone. To listen live to Omega Man Radio from your cell phone, dial 917-889-2745. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, we praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we praise you. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. If I die, let me die. right. I'm a sanctified and warrior. God has born me to loose and bind. I'm a new, newborn warrior. And I've got to set free the mind because I'm a warrior in the army of the Lord. I'm a warrior. Are you ready to take a ride? Grab your car. Joshua preaching the gospel of the Messiah and ministering in deliverance and miracle healing. Add some great guest interviews and you have the recipe for fresh oil for the airwaves. Tune in at OmegaManRadio.com.
917-889-2745 and press option 1 on your phone. To listen live to Omega Man Radio from your cell phone, dial 917-889-2745. From coast to coast and worldwide on the internet, this is Omega Man Radio with Shannon Davis. Praise the Lord. We're back. I see seven callers in the queue. We better get to those phones. Praise the Lord. Brother Kyle, are you back with me? I'm with you. Praise God. Let's take our first call. We're going to go to area code 973. 973, you're on the air. Hello, Hello? Shannon? Yes. What's your name? Where are you calling from tonight? This is Joseph from New Jersey. Hey, Joseph. Welcome back. How are you doing tonight? Oh, uh, well, I've been better. That's one of the reasons why I'm calling. But first of all, I just wanted to say uh, it's great to hear your voice and uh, Pastor Kyle's voice. Whenever I hear you, as soon as I heard you guys today, you know, uh, I guess at the top of the hour, I just, uh, it just cheers me up. You know, you, it's just, it, that's just like the joy of the Lord, the, the Holy Spirit in you guys. And, and I thank you so much for it. And I love you guys dearly for it. I appreciate it. Um, cause I, I mean, I, I just, yes. you know, everybody needs joy. Everybody needs that joy, that peace, that love of the Lord. Uh, and, and I can sense the kindness and love in, in your, in your voices. And it, it means a lot to me. Um, I just wanted hey. to, I, I'm calling in for prayer, uh, for, like for two or three things specifically, but something happened to me yesterday. Uh, I, I work as a substitute teacher and uh, there was an incident at the very end of the day where, uh, you know, nor- normally at the end of the day we have homeroom, like for the last 10 minutes. The kids come back to their homeroom. You know, they have it in the morning, but then in, in the morning we distribute the laptop computers, or it's called the Chromebooks, that they use during the day, uh, and, you know, in their different classes. And then at the end of the day they submit the Chromebooks back to the homeroom teacher. So I was covering for that homeroom teacher. Uh, and, of course, we in the morning we give it to them, and then uh, when they come back, we take it from them and, and store it in a little storage facility where, you know, where, the, where the laptops are charged overnight. Um, but for whatever reason, my, uh, my co-homeroom teacher, he didn't show up. And because I'm a sub, I don't have access to a key to open the uh, storage facility. So the kids were waiting, you know, and... And the 10 minutes had gone by, and it was time for them to go. And, you know, they're waiting and waiting. And finally, you know, I had to talk to a neighboring teacher who was nice enough to uh, loan me her key. Or actually, she came in and opened up. And, of course, all these students gathered around, and there was just, it was all chaotic and everything. And uh, there were kids coming in and out of the classroom, including what I thought were students from different, a different class, you know. So I, I, you know, I yelled out to everybody, listen, if you already submitted your Chromebook, you know, please leave. It's time to go. And, 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 you know, and if you did submit your Chromebook, you cannot come back into class. So anyway, there was this one student who was trying to come in, and I could see he was trying to maneuver his way around me, and I kept telling you, you can't come in. So basically, I kind of, I blocked, like, the doorway. I didn't let him in. Um, and then he wound up, like, getting annoyed with me, and he's like, well, you don't have to be so rough or something. I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but, um, you know, the following day, which was yesterday, um, I come into work and, you know, I'm issued like a, a, a different teacher. I'm basically issued a different teacher every day to cover. So, you know, immediately the principal says to me uh, uh, something about like, you know, the incident. And I, I thought he was talking about something else, but no, uh, could you please write, uh, write, you know, write out a note to me what happened. So immediately I started feeling a little tense. I wrote out the note and I submitted to him, you know, as far as what happened, just like what I described to you because some students said that you, like, put his hands on him. And then, and then um, so then I'm like, okay, so I forgot I was going to go to, you know, go to my class to cover, you know, for the day. And he's like, no, 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 give me, give me the paperback. You have to go downtown to the Board of Ed. I'm like, oh, geez, let's, let's go. So, I, you know, I wound up going down, and I sat down with these two ladies, um, you know, for a few minutes, and they basically said that this, uh, you know, there was an incident and that there, it's going to be under investigation, and they may have to call ISIS, which is uh, the Division of Youth and Family Services, which is like, I guess, the agency that, uh, you know, deals with like, uh, you know, abuse, basically, different types of abuse or whatever. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, you uh, are su- suspended indefinitely. You cannot go back to work until we 
we get back to you. So, you know, I don't, and I said, well, how soon can you get back to me? And they said they, they didn't know. So I have no idea when they're going to get back to me. But because I'm a sub, I, I'm not on a salary. I'm not a contracted employee. If I don't go in, I don't get paid. So basically, I think I'm going to have to start looking for a new, you know, another job. But, you know, y- yesterday and today, part, part of today, today was a lot better, but I was just feeling very, very tense and anxious and, you know, and worried, like, because, you know, I, I've heard that, you know, these people can be just, you know, uh, you know, the, the accusing and, and trying to, you know, make you feel bad or whatnot. I, I just, you know, but thank God I prayed with my mom yesterday and I prayed with uh, one of the pastors of my church yesterday, but, you know, it's like that feeling kind of creeps up on me every once in a while. I'm doing a lot better today, but it, it just hit me like a Mack truck. This, this incident came out of nowhere. So it, I, would, I would like prayer. Uh, I, I guess, you know, that what Pastor Kyle was referring to earlier today, early in his message just now, uh, I forget, he, he, the fear trap, I think he said it was called? Like when he yeah. talked about that, you know, where I feel like I'm kind of like not progressing, especially in my career uh, now I don't know what God wants me to do. I mean, it all depends on whether, you know, you know, first and foremost, what their response is going to be, what, you know, what their determination is going to be. But I, I have to plan on like them telling me, Hey, you can't work in the district anymore. And if that's the case, then I might just wind up just, you know, getting just a, a, a either an office job or something outside of the classroom, because I've just had too many, you know, close calls and, and incidents with, 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 you know, working as a, as a substitute teacher where I'm realizing that it's a very risky profession. And, and these kids, I'm, I'm t- it's like, you know, it's like an inner city type of uh, district. And the, the kids can be very, like, you know, nasty and very and disrespectful and not, like, you know, uh, obedient to authority. And, they, and they're really, like, they can be very vindictive and it's just, you know, it's like, here I am, I'm just like, now my future is going to be, you know, affected because of something that a student said, you know, and it's just, everything's just blown out of proportion, and I just, uh, so that's basically what I'd like to have, like, what I'd like prayer for, and also, like, my tendency to procrastinate, because I'm just generally, you know, a procrastinator, so I'm, I, I really sense that possibly this was God. God's hand was in this. Maybe he's trying to light a fire under my butt or something. Or uh, what Pastor Kyle mentioned earlier today, uh, talking about um, just, you know, the, uh, you know, being, because I, I do consider myself a warrior for the Lord. It's been spoken over me and, and you know, that you're going to get attacked, that, that this is, is an attack as well. Um, what do you say, Brother Kyle? Uh, what do you do in a situation I, like that? You go to work and then someone falsely accuses you, and um, they could say anything. Mm-hmm. Well, I believe you're going to be clear to that. Firstly, is what I, I hear when I'm praying here, uh, listening to you, but uh, still, uh, God is using it to sharpen you, too. He'll He'll turn around and use it uh, to sharpen you, but the enemy will not prevail against you, brother. He, he's trying to get you all worked up about it and worried and you know, the worst thing that could happen, you lo- you lose that job, and, and God moves you to a better job, you know. So uh, I wouldn't uh, let the enemy get you in anxiety about it. That's exactly where he wants you, to feel all beat up and, and like it's hopeless and you're, you're going to jail and all this stuff that he'll try to put in your mind. Uh, that's the way the enemy works. So, yeah. brother, know that Jesus is going to have the last word. You belong to him. Uh, he, you didn't do anything wrong here. So God will vindicate you. I would say uh, Psalms thirty-four, nineteen. I concur. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. So right now, Father God, in Jesus' name, we bind every foul, wicked spirit operating against our brother through that uh, that student, through any uh, dear Lord in that review board. We bind every foul, wicked spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask God that what has been covered be uncovered, that you would vindicate our brother, that you would restore him, Lord, to his position, and you'd open up a door for permanent tenure according to your will. Bless him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Brother Kyle, do you want to go after that spirit of procrastination? Okay, yeah. In the name of Jesus, we just thank you for our brother here. Uh, ask you to bless Joseph 
And, Father, surround him with your angels, a hedge of protection around about him. And we come against that spirit of procrastination, uh, try to rule over him and try to dictate how he's going to live his life. And we bind you in the name of Jesus. He said he doesn't want you in there. He's repented for you. Now we command you to come out of him in the name of Jesus right now. All procrastination, out, 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 out of him. Loose, Joseph. Let him go. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out, 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 out in the name of Jesus. Loose him. Let him go. I bind you. I break your grip on it. I break any generational procrastination passed down through the family line. You come out of there in the name of Jesus. Come out. 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 We cover him with the blood. Come out. Out of there. Up and out of there. Go in the name of Jesus. Go. All anxiety. Come out too. Come out. 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 All the way. All fear. Come out. 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 Come out of there. All the way out. All anxiety and fear too. You come out. 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 Come on. All that anxiety tells him something bad's gonna happen to him. All that lie from the devil trying to get him all worked up. You come out of there. All that fear. All that anxiety. Go. 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 Up out of him in the name of Jesus. All the way out. Go, 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 go. All anxiety, all that stress, all that tension, all that getting worked up into a frenzy over this. Come out. Jesus' name. Go. By the blood of Jesus. Loose him. Loose him. All worry. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Go. Go, 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 go. All the way out. Come 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 out. Give our brother peace that passes understanding in this. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every bit of that procrastination from the roots, go, go, come out of him. In the name of Jesus, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Keep coming out, up and out of there. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, all the way out, I bind you and break your power. Break your power. In Jesus' name, go, go. In Jesus' name, all the way, all the way. By the blood of Jesus against you. Jesus' name. How are you doing there, brother? Oh, very good, thank you. Good, well, Joseph, good. you hang on the line, brother. We got more deliverance up ahead. Thank you for calling in, my brother. That was Brother Joseph. We're live right now with Pastor John Kyle. Let's go to the next caller. Area code 541. 541, you're on the air. Hi, Shannon. This is Heather from Oregon. Hey, Heather. Welcome aboard. You're on with Pastor Kyle. How can we help you tonight? Um, I just need a lot of prayer. Um I just feel it's an honor to be on with you guys. I don't get the opportunity to call in because I'm always working at the time of the shows. So um, it's by the grace of God tonight that I get to call in. So um, oh, welcome I've been work. doing a lot of spiritual warfare in the school I work, so I get a lot of backlash because I'm fighting um, them teaching the kids yoga in the school. Oh, and, um, yeah, so I've been binding and anointing the school and, and, you know, just binding up all spirits and canceling their assignments in Jesus' name. And so, yeah, I get attacked financially. And um, also I have a daughter that won't talk to me because I lost her when she was young. And um, I've been walking fully with the Lord for six years now. So, But she, she, I have grandchildren. I would like to be a part of her life. So I'd like prayer for her, too, to... Uh, forgive me and open up to me. And also I've been getting a lot of backlash in my marriage and my husband and me aren't on the same page spiritually. I mean, he, he believes in Jesus and everything, but he has bondages. And so we argue and I, demons are manifesting for me because um, the other night I wished him dead and I don't even know where that came from. So I just need prayer. Well, you're in the right place tonight. Brother Kyle, any comments? Uh, well, what's your daughter's name, sister? Uh, her name is Robin. She's my first daughter. I had okay. her when I was really young. I was 16 when I had her. Okay. All right. And you say that you're having uh, uh, attacks? Uh, you feel like there's any witches or warlock coming against you or something like that in the school as well? I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if they even know that I'm praying because I go. I do it the night before they have these yoga classes. Are you I a go teacher? And... No, I'm a janitor. Oh, you work at the school though. Yeah, I clean okay. uh, elementary school. It's from kindergarten to eighth grade. 
Well, okay, good for you. teaching them yoga that young, huh? Yeah, it really ang- angers me because, yeah, they're ringing Buddhist bells, and, and I'm like, you know, you take Jesus Christ out of the school, but you can do that. They allow that to go on, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I get outraged. So <laughs> I just pray and pray. Even while they're doing it, I, you know, I'm cleaning that area near there, and I can hear this going on. I'm just like, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ, you <laughs> foul, wicked spirits. And, you know, I just kind of go off. Under Praise my the breath. Lord, so sister. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know if they know. You're cleaning the not, school and cleaning it? those demons out. You're doing double duty That's over right. there. Good for you. God bless you. <laughs> But uh, you're getting some real attacks in your marriage? Yeah, that's been going on a long time, yeah. And in my finances, too. Brother Kyle, what do you do if you're in a marriage, uh, whether you're uh, our sister tonight or maybe your brother out there and your your wife is not on the same sheet? You know, I hear both both types of situation going on, uh, couples out there, and uh, one is... Um, involved in spiritual warfare the other and is oblivious to it what do you do well you do uh prayer and intercession for your mate for one thing and uh you got to do warfare against the uh the demons in your mate too as well since you live with them day and night and so much at a time uh, otherwise uh you know they're going to harass you and trouble you and, and you realize that uh when you're unequally yoked in a sense even though he believes in jesus and he and he saved uh he believes a little bit different than you uh so you've got to uh, uh come against the spirits that are using him to torment you because that's what what will happen in a marriage so often is the spirits in the other mate that doesn't believe similar will, uh, if they don't believe in deliverance, the spirits in them will attack you and torment you. So you've got to come against that. But it's something in you also because you said you wanted him dead the other night, you said. So what's that operating in you? You need to get deliverance from that so you don't have that rise up in you and, and want to attack back like that. Instead, you want to intercede for him. So whatever that is that rose up in you, we need to cast that out if you're willing. Yes, I'm very willing. That's why I called in tonight because I did not, I was not in agreement with that. It just came out of my mouth like I wasn't even, it seemed like I wasn't even in control. It's just, yeah, Let's go after that I tonight. Wanted... Are you willing to forgive your husband for uh, rejecting you, for uh, any abuse, anything like that? Yes. Just saying, Lord Jesus, I forgive my husband. Lord Jesus, I forgive my husband. And I ask that you would bless him. And I ask that you would bless him. And I ask that you would open up his eyes to deliverance and spiritual warfare. And I ask you would open up his eyes to deliverance and spiritual warfare. So that we can work together as a team, in Jesus' name. So that we can work together as a team, in Jesus Christ's name. Is there anybody else you may need to forgive tonight? Um... Probably the person that molested my daughter when she was young. That's why I lost her. You know, it started a big can of worms. So I, the other night, listening to your show and stuff, I, I did forgive him, but I can go through the motions anyway. Now. Well, uh, how do you feel right now? Did you did you tell the Lord that uh, you forgive him and you ask him to bless him if he's alive? Yeah. Okay. I don't know who it was. It never came out who who exactly, but okay. I just asked the Lord, that, um, whoever it is, Lord, you know who it is, and I forgive him, even though that's the hardest person, you know, because it caused me to lose my daughter. We well, you know God can restore what the enemy has taken, and uh, God will deal with that person, but uh, that sets you up for freedom now. So we're going to go ahead and pray with you right now. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Take a deep cough out of your stomach. Now just breathe. We're going to call these things out. We bind your strong man. We bind ours. We forbid any transference of spirits in Jesus' name. And we bind every foul, wicked spirit that has been sent to torment you. Destroy your marriage. Attack your finances. Attack your mind. Every foul, wicked spirit. We bind and rebuke you in Jesus' name. We command you to begin to manifest and come out right now. You're not going to hurt her. You're going to go to where the Lord Jesus sends you. And we loose angels of God to pull swords going right now, angels of God, and cut all communication lines between the demons, the strong man, anything on the outside, and begin to sword and attack these spirits in Jesus' name. Start coming out. 
every spirit Jesus wants out manifest and go right now. Come out. Loose her. Take a couple breaths, sister. In the name of Jesus. Come out right now. We break every word curse spoken over you by anyone in the name of Jesus. We loose you from that. Take it over, Brother Kyle. Yes, that spirit that came up and rose up in her and spoke and felt like she wasn't even in control, that spirit that manifested, <laughs> you come out of there. Out, 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 out. Come on. All that spirit that rose up toward her husband, come out. I bind you. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. All, all the way out. All that hidden rage and anger toward him or murder toward him or whatever it may be, you come out. Come out of there. I rebuke you. Come out. All the way. I bind you, demon. You've lost your house. She doesn't want you in there. Come out. Keep coming out. Out, 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 out. All marriage-breaking spirits, strife. Come out. 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 All those spirits that want to divide and separate her from her husband, come out. Come out of there. In the name of Jesus, go. Spirit of division, come out. Spirit of strife, come out. Spirit of separation, come out. 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 Come out of there. All the way. Go by the blood of Jesus. Loose her. Let her go. The Lord rebuke you, demon. I have authority over you. Brother Shannon has authority over you. You have to obey. Come out, every one of you. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. What, what's your name, Spirit? You Spirit on the surface. Who are you? What are you doing to her? What are you doing to our sister? I bind you in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. You come out of there. Come on. Keep coming out. Keep coming out. Come on, all that deep wound in there. You come out of there. All that deep wound from the abuse on her daughter and the hurt from her daughter being not talking to her all these years. You come out of there right now. All that deep-rooted hurt. All that deep-rooted rejection and hurt and wound. Come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out of her right now. Come out. Come on, all that pain from the from her daughter, from the relationship. Come out. Come out of there. All those spirits that set up a wound in there. Come out. 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 Come out of there. I bind you. I bind you. You will let go of Heather. Come out. All the way out. All the way out. Jesus' name. Go. By the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We pray you heal her broken heart, Father. And come out of there, demons. All those spirits in there. Come out. Come out, come out, come out. All that wounded spirit, come out. Come out, come out, come out. Wounded, come out. All the way out. All the way out. All the way up out of there. In Jesus' name. We just break that curse of separation from our daughter. We pray for restoration, Lord. Yes. I pray a supernatural manifestation of restoration between her and her daughter. In Jesus' name. Keep coming out of there. Come out. Any hindering spirits that are hindering her from being restored to her daughter, you come out of Heather right now. In Jesus' name. Go, 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 go. Come out. Come out. All hindrances. Come out. Come out. Come out by the blood of Jesus. Right now, hindrances to restoration. Come out. Come out. Hindrances to walking in unity with her husband and with her daughter. Come out. All those hindrances. Come out. 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 Come out of there. Come on, Damon. You having problems, Damon? Sounds like you're having problems. Come out right now in Jesus' name, Damon. Break your power. All spirits are being belittled. Come out in Jesus' name. Insecurity, inferiority, fear, come out in Jesus' name. All spirits of rejection from others come out in the name of Jesus. Every demon the Lord Jesus wants out, manifest and come out and loose her. We rebuke you in Jesus' name. Let her go right now. In Jesus' name, you will come out, you foul spirit. You're not going to torment her anymore. Loose her in the name of Jesus right now. Come out. All the way. At the roots, in Jesus' name. Let's go. In deep wounded hurt, I agree. Come out in Jesus' name. Let her go, and we bind the strong man and the husband and every foul, wicked spirit operating in her against him. In Jesus' name, we ask God you'd open his eyes to deliverance. God, bring him into the battle that he can work there with his wife and they can work as a team and attack the host to hell, Father God. Soften his heart. In Jesus' name, we rebuke all divorce, marriage-breaking spirits. In the name of Jesus, and I ask God that you'd bless her finances, bless her on the job, open up new doors for her. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, these spirits will continue to come out, and they'll go to where the Lord Jesus sends you. 
in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Sister, you continue to thank tune you. in. There will be more coming out tonight. God bless you. Okay, thank you so much. God keep, bless you, too. Keep up the good work. Praise the Lord for what you're doing by in those yoga spirits. Let's go to the next car, 406. Keep up the good work. Praise the Lord for what you're doing by in those yoga 406, uh, turn down your radio there. Get a little feedback. <laughs> oh, hi. Ah, there you go. That's you. What's your name? 406. Hi. Montana. <laughs> yes. Hi, Pastor Kyle. This is Aaron from Ennis. Hi. Hey, welcome aboard. How are you? <laughs> um, yeah, a couple months ago, I um drove down to uh, Pastor Kyle's Warfare Conference. I remember and, uh, you. Yeah, You're... that was awesome. It was. Uh, awesome. Praise God. Yes. Um, well, the re- reason why I'm calling is because... Um, the Lord put it on my heart to share uh, a testimony with you. Wonderful. If that's right. Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard from you, so yes, I want to hear it. Yeah. Um, well, two weeks ago, exactly today, um, my 17-year-old daughter called me at work, and um, she said, uh, Mom, I have to talk to you. Well, the last time I heard those words, uh, she came home with a tattoo on her foot. So I was just a little nervous there. Uh-huh. Um, she comes in uh, to where I was working, and um, she said, uh, can we go in the bathroom? So we went in the bathroom, and uh, she breaks down crying, and she tells me that she's being attacked by demons. And no sooner did she get that out of her mouth, her eyes roll back into her head, her body starts twitching, and this demon starts to manifest. Wow. So I just took the palm of my hand and put it on her forehead, and um, I just said, uh, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will go down right now, and you will stay down until I call you forth. And so she comes back to my daughter, she just starts crying, and she tells me that um, her and her friend had driven to Bozeman to go see a movie, which I knew nothing about, and on the way home, this demon had manifested in my daughter while she was driving her car and had taken control of the steering wheel. Wow. Um, when a... Uh, well, the road from Bozeman to where I live is um, a two-lane road. It's really windy and curvy, uh, following a river. It's kind of a dangerous road. Anyways, uh-huh. um, she said this demon had, you know, had manifested and was, had taken control of the steering wheel. And uh, she just started praying in her head. She said she could see out of her eyes, and she could see, but she had absolutely no control over her body. Um, so she just started wow. praying, and um, you know, she started praying to God, and she was rebuking this demon, and she said it was basically uh, she was pretty much fighting for her life uh, because this demon was trying to crash her car and kill her. Um, Erin, do you know what the movie yeah. was that she watched? Yeah, no. I don't know what it was. Um, so, after hearing this, I am extremely disturbed at this point. <laughs> so, I send her home, and I, and I tell her that I'll be, I'm right behind her. I'll be right there. Um, now, my son just happened to be home from college that weekend. Um, you probably remember him, Shannon. I wrote you about him telling you that he wanted to get a tattoo of a dream catcher oh, on his right. arm. Yes, I do. Yes, I remember now. Yeah, yeah. Um, you told him that if he wanted to be a warrior, that Jesus Christ was looking for warriors to cast out devils in his name. And uh, he really took that seriously to heart. So I just want to say thank you very much for that. Praise the Lord. So I call... Yes. Yes, praise the Lord. I I call my son up, and I ask him if he wants to help me do a deliverance. And he says, yes. All right. 
Um, I didn't tell him it was his sister, though. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I get home, and I'm, you know, I get my anointing oil, and I bind up all the spirits, and I start casting out demons, and I have to say it's kind of going slow, and my daughter gets a word from the Holy Spirit about head covering, which I completely, totally forgot to put a head covering on her. Um, so I run and get a head covering for her and for myself. And, and um, I come back in the room, and her whole body is just shaking. And she says, Mom, that made him really mad. Oh, yeah, they don't like that. But when, <laughs> oh, my gosh. But you know what? When I put that head covering on her... Um, and jump back into doing deliverance, it, things just went so much uh, faster and smoother. It really makes a big difference. The next demon that came up um, was a deaf, dumb, and mute spirit, and I've never actually um, cast one of those out before. That was, that was pretty strange. Um, you know, I commanded it to uh, tell me its name, and... It just lifted my daughter's foot up into my lap and removed her sock and pointed to her tattoo. Wow. Um, well, my daughter, she got a Bible verse tattooed on her foot, so she, she thought that, you know, since it was a Bible verse, that that was okay. But obviously not, because this demon had entered her through that tattoo. Um, so we cast that demon out, and... Um, I started praying in tongues over my daughter, and then afterwards I asked her if she uh, she heard anything speaking in her mind, and she said, uh, they're speaking in gibberish. So um, the Holy Spirit just told me that I needed to, um, to break all uh, communication lines between all the spirits, uh, so I... I did that, and she says, um, it's saying I'm sorry over and over. So I said, uh, you demon on the surface, manifest right now in Jesus' name. And this demon comes up, and it's just crying and crying, and it starts saying, I'm so sorry, Michaela. I never meant to hurt you. Please forgive me. I love you. And I'm like, what in the heck? So I said, I command you in the name of Jesus to tell me your name, demon. And the demon says, Mark. Well, let me just stop for a second. Um, three and a half years ago, my brother-in-law committed suicide. He hung himself in his mother's garage, and his name was Mark. Um... Yeah, pretty wild. <laughs> so, so a spirit jumped said, off of him to her. Go ahead. No, it was actually him. Um, I said, "Will that answer stand at judgment?" And he says, "Yes." Well, my son jumps out of his chair, and he says, "You're a liar, demon! I rebuke you!" And the demon says, "No, it's me, Mark." And I said, will that answer stand at judgment? And he says, yes, I swear it. And he just starts crying again. And he says, tell my mom I'm so sorry and that I love her. And tell my family that I love them. I'm so sorry, Michaela. That's my daughter. Uh, he says, I never meant for this to happen. And then he says, uh, he sent me here to kill you. Well, I said, I mean, I'm just like flabbergasted at this point. I can't believe that this is actually happening. And my son is just like mouthing to me, is this really happening? Is this really happening? <laughs> um, so I said, well, you can't, you can't stay here in this body. You have, you have to go. And he said, I don't want to go back. And I said, sorry, Mark but you can't stay here in Michaela. And he says, I know. He says, I can't do this to her anymore. 
Sister, it could not so, have been Mark himself. Uh, he's gone. Either he's in heaven or hell, like every person is when they die. They can't come back. But a familiar spirit calling itself by the name of Mark, who could have been working with him uh, um, when he died, came out of him, him, and these familiar spirits are looking for another host. They can jump into another family member if there's an open door, and uh, they can even sound like the person. That's how these people do these seances, and they bring back uh, what they thought was, you know, Aunt Sally who died, and she's manifesting, speaking. They say, oh, that's Aunt Sally, but it's not. They're gone. But a familiar spirit who knows that person very well, who may even go by the name, the same name, impersonating them, is actually speaking. What do you say about that, Brother Cal? I agree. You were talking to a so demon. It was just a- yeah. Yes, and it may it have... It was not Mark. Right. He may have called itself... It may be called Mark the Demon, but it's not the Mark, that uh, your uncle that died, um, very well came through him, is what I'm saying, when he died, to try to jump so into somebody like else in the family. It was in Mark, and when he died, it went into my daughter? That's one possibility. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, or it's a demon masquerading as Mark. Yes. You know, because the Bible says they can't pass from heaven to uh, back to earth. That's just not possible. They can't do it. When a lot of people so, die, um, when they die, the demons come out of their body because there's no life in them anymore. And they look for someone else to jump into. They like to stay in the family if they can. Um, huh. So... Uh, at, at any rate, though, you were, um, you're were you coming up against the host of hell right there. What happens next? Um, you're doing well, good work so far. Uh, cast, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I cast it out. Yes. And my daughter uh, violently starts coughing this demon out. And um, my daughter just starts crying. Um, cause she's very upset because she thinks she just sent her uncle back to hell. And um, the, the Holy Spirit just came upon my daughter uh, and just filled her. And um, she just, like, immediately stopped crying. And you could just feel, you, you could just tell that the Holy Spirit was filling her with love and peace and understanding. And um, Praise the she, Lord, um, sister. Yeah. God she, was delivering her. She, she, yeah. Yeah, it was... It was pretty intense, I have to say. Comfort your daughter Um, that uh, she didn't send her uncle to hell. Um, Only God knows where he's at. He's in heaven or hell, one of the two places. Uh, We can't roam the earth when we die. But uh, that demon did come out, and that's the important part. Yeah. Um, Well, when you commit suicide, uh, you go straight to hell, right? You know what? uh, My my belief is we don't have the right to take our life, and... uh, I believe that uh, most people that commit suicide probably are in hell, but you know what? I'm not their ultimate judge. Um, what do you say, Brother Kyle? Even if God has well, mercy, you don't want to take that chance, do you? No, you don't want to do it, but the, the fact is that many ministers have killed themselves, and I'm, I just can't say all of them went to hell because they were under the influence of a demon True. at that time, even though it's a sin to kill uh, if you do it under the control of a demon. That may not be the case. I can't say. I can't judge, okay? I can't uh, It may be the case. I just don't know. But, yeah. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't know. Uh, you you don't want to take your life uh, by any means. Uh, at best, you're playing Russian roulette. Uh, if God does have mercy on people to commit suicide, but I wouldn't want to take the chance. Let me put it that way. I know All people right. are in pain. There was a, actually a minister. Uh, you probably heard the same story, Brother Kyle, just this past week. A uh, well-known minister, uh, his wife had uh, died a year ago, and he was been tor- being tormented the last two weeks. He said he could hear his wife walking in the house, and she was talking to him, and he took a gun and committed suicide right in front of his son who was trying to stop him. He just couldn't take the torment wow. anymore. Mm. And he's in eternity wow. now. Uh, he needed deliverance is first thing I want to say about that, but God have That's mercy. Right. Back to your situation, Aaron. Praise God, sister. Uh, did your yeah. son help? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, um, when that's when how you train him. Demon said, "When yeah, when the demon said, um, 
Mark, my, my son jumped out of his chair and he was and he said, "You're a liar, demon! I rebuke you." And he said, the demon said, "No, it's me, Mark." And my son said, "Will that answer stand at judgment?" And the demon said, "Yes, I swear it." They well, lie. They, they do. They do still lie. That's not foolproof. Um, and uh, I don't know. The demon um, could be giving you a partial truth there. Again, I do believe the demon's name was Mark, but understand he was a familiar spirit, probably attached to your uncle Mark. Work through him. Now that would be my best guess, but it was not uh, your uncle. He's gone. He doesn't come back unless he right. died died in Christ. But uh, you know, demons take on the names of people. Surely, surely, surely they do. <laughs> Yeah, that, but, uh, it was it was strange because you know we just didn't know what to think. Sure. Um, when he said Mark, come out, Mark, anyways, in the name of Jesus. I, that's what you do. That's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I did. <laughs> but anyways, um, the Lord just put that on my heart to share with you, and so um, that's why I called. Fantastic the Lord. testimony, Pastor. That's yeah. wonderful. Praise, yeah. praise so, the Lord. Yes, and um. You saw that there was a demon that was associated with a tattoo. That's a very important lesson. I do believe they come in through tattoos. Yeah. You don't want to get one of those. Did your son get the no. dream catcher? No. Praise no, God. You really had impact on him when because I showed him what you had written back to me, and um, yeah, he really took that to heart and he put that completely out of his mind. Good for him. Yeah, thank you, you do not want a, a dream catcher in your house or even tattooed on your body. Much less. No, uh, no. You also learned that uh, there is um, the head covering does really work, and uh, what it oh means is God. you're just yeah. you're submitting to God. Uh, Word of God says you put it on when you pray and prophesy. It protects you from the fallen angels that look down on women too, and the demons hate it. I, I encountered a demon. I said, "Why do you hate it so much?" It says, "Because I want to be the covering," is what the demon said. <laughs> so it, right. it strips them of some well, of the power. Well, I put one on her. And on myself. Praise the uh, Lord. I just, yeah. And what do you mean well, by head thank covering? thank you very much. What was it that you actually put over your hair? What did I put on? Um, I have these large scarves that awesome. um, I tied around uh, on her and on myself, yeah. Works just fine. Scarf, towel, hat, whatever yep, you it, got. It really did make a difference. Of course, I've seen a, uh, I've seen men that have had hats on and delivered, so they didn't get any delivered, so they took it off. So if you're a man of God, you put take your hat off. If you're wearing one, pick your ball cap off. But hey, sister, uh, you you see, you've got the authority to cast that devils. Uh, the same as Brother Kyle, me, or anybody yes. else out there. We all have that authority in Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, praise the Lord. You taught your son and your Thank daughter you so about much. deliverance, and now God will use them to help their friends that uh, He puts in their path to get delivered. So fantastic testimony tonight. Yes, Amen. thank you very much for letting me share that. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Kyle. I'll be down to visit you when uh, the weather gets better. <laughs> okay, Sister Aaron, good to hear from you. Thank you for coming. All righty, thank you. God bless mm -hmm. you. Bye-bye. Keep up the good work over there. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the next call. We're live right now with Pastor John Kyle. Let's go to 513 area code. 513, you're on the air. Hello, this is Connie from Cincinnati. Connie, welcome. I've been on here before. How are you doing tonight? Good, good. I I enjoyed that um, that teaching tonight. It it spoke right to me. Oh, because, praise God! Uh, Glad to hear. Yes, yes. Because sometimes I I walk in fear uh, uh, over my finances. My well, I I used to be an SRA. I'm not now. I'm I'm. I'm uh, I'm delivered. <laughs> but, yes, you're uh, a child of God now. Yeah. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. And um, so, uh, but I'm not in contact with my daughter because she's still with them. I, and I I always like prayer for her too. But um, I I. I know this is not an excuse, but I've been busy this week, and I really haven't prayed, prayed this week, and I, I really have felt it. And I have um, I end up speaking some word curses over myself and over my daughter, and I'm like, why did I speak that? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, and I just, 
I um I would like to get that prayer that you to break those word curses. You spoke a certain prayer, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a good prayer. And um, so, um, but I I just uh, I probably need prayer myself because I spoke those things, and I I just want to um, renounce them and ask God to forgive me for them. I don't even remember what they were. I I, I don't even want to. You want to break them right now? Yes. Brother Kyle, would you like to lead Connie in a prayer to break any word curses she spoke over herself? And maybe there's some others out there again that just tuning in right now, they say, yeah, you know, I've cursed myself. I've even done it myself, Connie. Sometimes I say I'm just not going to make it. And then I (laughs) I catch myself and I said, oh, what did I say? Yeah. I said, I'm not going to make it outside of Jesus Christ. (laughs) I throw that in, but. You know what? We well, all need to break some well, curses some, we've spoken. Right. And, well, and sometimes it, it's, I'm not trying to say that I'm perfect, but it's the company that you keep, too. And Yes. Um, I, I, need, I need new friends. I do. I, um, I left a church because they didn't believe in deliverance and things, and I, I don't have a church now. You guys are my church. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> <laughs> because I learn, I've been learning a lot, um, but uh, I, I don't have a home church, and I feel so, uh, I don't yeah. know, like I need, I need that. I need to be with other believers, need and so I was talking, yeah, and, and uh, I was, so I need prayer over that too, because I, I I can't find one around here. What part of the country? Well, you be? might not find a perfect church, but at least you can find one that believes mostly right. That's better than, so you can at least have fellowship with other believers. Uh, and then maybe right. you can teach them about deliverance as time goes on. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I I tried to do that once, and that, uh-huh. it backfired it, on me. So. Well, yeah, sometimes that can happen. But that's what we are, though. We're going to be persecuted sometimes, and, and, and it's going to be by Christians. But still, we don't give up trying to teach people about deliverance and showing them their need and passing out books on deliverance or whatever we need to do to get the word out. Connie, where are you located at? In Cincinnati. Okay, you're in Ohio. It's a big city. Yes. Ohio. Um. You know, I think the only one I know up in Ohio is maybe Russ Dizdar. I think he's in Ohio. I'm not sure. Is he in Pennsylvania? Um, nobody's coming to mind right now. Do you know of any Ohio ministries, deliverance ministries, Brother Kyle? Not off, off, offhand. I'd have to, to uh, look into that. But withstanding a uh, church that, you know, has made itself known as uh, it does spiritual warfare and deliverance, Brother Kyle's point is, is well taken. Uh, if you can find a church that's still... Uh, preaches the word of God, the blood of Jesus. Uh-huh. It may be one of those little smaller Baptist churches, little you know, okay. Um, okay. without a large congregation. You know, they they still preach the word of God. Right. Uh, it won't be a mega right. church. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> oh, I know that. But oh, um, I've already been to one of them. That no, that don't work. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, then I'll do that. Not a Southern Baptist, but a, just a Baptist, or. Oh, well, I don't know. You might do better in a spirit-filled church. They're more likely to. Little church they, of God. Some Baptists are good. They just preach the Word of God. That's true. But yeah. Southern Baptists are usually against the things of the Holy Spirit. Usually. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the flip know. side of it too. I've never uh, been to them. Uh, church of God is good. You know, they believe in just uh-huh. about everything except for deliverance. <laughs> I was raised in the Church of God. You can't okay. go wrong. But you know what? I haven't been to one of the newer ones. So uh, even some of them are starting to change, unfortunately. A lot of these are just trying to follow the right. lead of the mega churches. So you just going to have yes. to go there and see if you feel the peace of God when you're there. And if okay. not, then go check it out another one the next Sunday. There's got to be something okay. around there and we're going to pray and ask God that he'll lead you to the right place but uh, we'll pray for you yeah. right now uh, any special request in addition to finding fellowship well 
Yes, that's my main thing. Because I, I need somebody to stand in agreement with me about my, my daughter and about getting her out. And, and then and also just, sure. you know, just fellowship and not um, listening to the negativity of other people. Yeah, that's hard sometimes. Uh, yeah. What is your daughter's name? Yeah. Kathy. We're going to pray for that right now. Uh, Brother Kyle, would you like to lift up uh, Sister Kathy? Yes, and then I'll lead you in a, in a prayer to uh, cancel your word curse oh, yes, as well. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Uh, yes. so, so, Father, we lift up Kathy. We bind the demons that have brought her into the Satanism, and we command mm. those demons to be bound in the name of Jesus, Father, and we pray, Lord, for supernatural uh, uh, intervention by the Holy Spirit to bring her out of that, that darkness in Jesus' name. And we command any spirits that are blinding her to get off of her eyes yeah. right now so she yeah. can see the truth and come to the truth and to the knowledge. Yes. of the truth and come to Jesus Father we intercede for uh, our sister's daughter right now and we cry mm -hmm. out to heaven for salvation for her and deliverance for her Father and that there mm -hmm. will be a change uh, Father something will change and she will be uh, hungry for God hungry yeah. to come out of this and she'll recognize that her mother has something she needs she has Jesus, and, and that she'll recognize that she's empty without you, Lord. And her eyes will just be open in Jesus' name, and she'll come to know you. We claim her salvation today in Jesus' name, in Jesus' yeah. name, and cover her with the blood of Jesus. And now just uh, let's cancel some words you've spoken. Just say, I renounce yeah. and break. I renounce and break. Every self-spoken word curse. Every self-spoken word first. That I have spoken over myself. That I have spoken over myself. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And you might be specific, sister, and just name some of them and, and cancel okay. their assignment. Just say, I cancel yes. their assignment. I cancel their assignment. As of... I co okay, yeah, okay. go ahead and be specific, yeah. Well, uh, uh, over my my finances, over um, my job, um, over uh, I, I was just putting down myself, Lord. I I and and you made me. I'm not I'm not this person that I spoke over myself that I put my down myself down about. And I know I know that you created me. To be a warrior, you created me to do that. You gave me yeah. a vision years ago, and I'm going to walk in that. I am going to walk in that. I haven't yet, but I am going to. And I'm going to. I'm going to start uh, breaking in and binding demons and coming against Satan and his kingdom, and because I'm in your kingdom, and I'm been in your kingdom for a long time and I, I haven't walked in that authority and um but now I am Lord. I am yeah. because I know uh, we can speak life or death with our tongue and I know that. I know that. But I'm gonna walk in that Lord and I'm gonna um start believing that I'm gonna find someone to agree with me around this area and that um, it's going to be a good church and um, good people. I believe it's going to be a divine appointment. It's going to be a divine connection and um, people that will agree with me and know and, and do, do deliverance. And, and uh, they also believe and deliverance like I do. And I thank you, Lord, for that. Thank Amen. You, Lord. Lord, give her the people that she needs in her life, Lord, to stand with her in faith and agree yes. with her, Father, even if they don't believe exactly the same. 
But, Lord, we pray someone will stand with her in faith and agree with her for a daughter and for her uh, life. Lord, we just rebuke any spirits that have been sent to keep her poor, uh, keep her living under a poverty spirit, uh, spirits that have attacked her in her finances. We rebuke those spirits right now. And if there's a spirit attached to her, you come out of her in the name. Of Jesus, you poverty spirit, you lack, you poverty mentality spirit, you come out of there in the name of Jesus. Loose her, let her go. Come out. Come out of there in the name of Jesus. All spirit of poverty, lack, debt, in Jesus' name, loose her and come out right now. Curses over her finances. That self spoken curses, we cancel them in Jesus' name and command those spirits to come out right now that she let in through her mouth. You come out. She's re- Repented for you. Now you come out in the name of Jesus right now. Go. Looser. Looser. Come out. Out, 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 out of her. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Come on. All curses on the finances. Come out. Come out. Keep coming out. Out of there. All the way out. The Lord rebuke you. Come out. 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 Come on. We break the poverty curse. Go. Go. The Bible says we're blessed going in and we're blessed coming out. Blessed in the city, blessed in the country. Come out of there. Out, 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 out of there. All the way out. In Jesus' name. Go by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. All debt. All spirit of debt, spirit of lack, spirit of never enough. Come out. In Jesus' name. Go. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Spirit Spirit of never enough, never having enough. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out of there. Out, 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 out. The blood of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Uh, all the way. <laughs> Jesus name. Jesus name. <laughs> Sister, you stay I on the line? I my mom. I, yes, I you, could hear my mom. It's saying you're going to be poor the rest of your life. I could hear her, and uh, I I didn't even know she spoke that over me. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the so, curse, yeah. We break that yeah. curse. I agree. I break that curse. In the yeah, name of Jesus. The man, the demons that came in through that curse to come out of her. Yes. yes. Go. Jesus' <laughs> name. All the demons that come in through a mom speaking that over <laughs> you. Come out. Yes. Jesus' name. Go. All the yes. way out. Uh-huh. Every curse and spirit go. go in the name of Jesus. Sister, more deliverance is coming up ahead. You you hang in there. Thank you for calling in tonight. God yeah. bless you. That was Sister Connie. We're going to go to the next call. We're on live right now with Pastor John Kyle. Mass deliverance is coming up soon. Let's go to uh, 843. 843, you're on the air. How you doing? Praise the Lord. How you doing tonight, brother? Just Antoine. Antoine, good to hear from you, man. How you been? I'm going through something because every year, around about October, November, December, it just replays itself. I don't understand this. How could I be faulted for the homosexuality and the homosexuality sin? That's what I want to find out. Repeat that again. How could you be what? Insulted? Faulted, faulted. Uh, assaulted, for homosexuality okay. And homosexuality is sin. You say, uh, is it is it fair you be punished for something that you didn't want that was done to you when you were a young man? Right, even if I'm grown. Cause this thing did just didn't start it. It is just nothing that I choose. That's right. But you're still doing so, it. Huh? But you're still involved in it. But was it my fault? No. Well, I'm maybe it's not been your fault, your fault, fault but you, you have a will and a choice. No, uh, let me explain something here. My will and choice was taken away from me. Even my my mentality has changed since all of that had happened. Okay. So what I'm saying is this. How could I be faulted? For things even in my doubthood that it's following me in my doubthood. Okay, the person who did it, did they got um, caught? Did 
God deal with them? No, God ain't did nothing about it. Because like people tell me, you can't blame God for that. Somebody need to take responsibility, not me. Believe me, those that did that to you, they're going to pay. God, yep. no, God they're not will. Because you know how I say no, they're not, and I'm, I kind of disagree with it. Because how they going to pay 38 years, that would be 39 January coming. 38 years of my life was destroyed and took it away from me because of this and abuse, rape, mentally, sexual, and physically. I don't put myself in this. Yeah, I may be still doing it, but this is the only thing I know. What is um, what is a few years in comparison to eternity? They may thought they were going to get away from it, from it, but if they don't repent, they're going to go into eternity lost. Eternity versus how many ever years they lived down here. Now, it is true that uh, it was forced on you. You were victimized. But, you know, Jesus loves you, and he's made a way for you, for me, to restore us. And yes, it has stolen almost 40 years of your life. But you know what? God can, God will save your soul, and you'll have eternity with him. And what the enemy uh, did to you doesn't mean anything in terms of the life you're going to have ahead with the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you, you realize that what you're doing now is wrong, right? But, but what you're saying to me is that you struggle with it. You have you're fighting these feelings. You're in a warfare every day, aren't you, Antoine? Yeah, I went out to bed in this war, selling these feelings, and dressing up as a woman. If this stuff never didn't happen to me, and that's why I was arguing with my minister not too long ago. I told her, so why God didn't stop it when He see what it was going? He's supposed to be protecting me since day one. It's because the war we're in, brother. We're in a war from the day that we're born. No, God said he will protect those. And God said he was shield and protect. And God said all of this, but where did it happen? I didn't see it when I was five. Yeah, what do you no. say, brother? What do you say, brother Kyle? Well, I say that things are happening to people all the time in this world. Even though God says they protect us, we have to appropriate that and believe that. And when we're too young, if our parents aren't appropriating that and believing that over us, then we can be abused, we can be attacked by the enemy. Because it just happens because the world is wicked and full of sin and evil people that are possessed with demons and controlled by demons. And no, it's not your fault. And, you know, I can't, uh, you know, stand and say, you know, uh, everything was perfect in my own life growing up. I was attacked, too, in different ways. Maybe not the same way as you, but I was still attacked, too. And so what am I going to say? God was supposed to protect me in that? Uh, I should have never been attacked that way. My dad died when I was seven, eight years old in a car wreck. You know, why didn't God protect me from that? I can either go through life being the victim and blaming God for not protecting me, or I can come out of this darkness and depend on God now to be a different person by the grace of God. Call upon the name of the Lord, brother. You didn't hear nothing I was saying. You talking about coming out. Okay, I was exposed to the whole world. You understand? Okay. Listen. That's what I'm saying. My whole life is destroyed even in open shame to the world. Everybody knows that I'm a drag queen, I'm homosexual, he this and he that. Yeah, y'all see those um, uh, forget about what they say about me because they said the same thing to Christ. But regardless of the fact, but okay, it's one, 38. Jesus Christ is not ashamed of you, my brother. If, mm-hmm. you, if He's not ashamed of us if we will repent. You repent of one thing, uh, I repent of another you. thing. And he doesn't remember it anymore. He can restore what, what the enemy has taken. Write your name in the Lamb's yes, Book of restoration, Life. Restoration does not happen overnight. No, it doesn't. But you know what? You're a lot further ahead than someone that is involved in whatever sin it is there right now, and they are oblivious to what they're doing is wrong, or they don't care. 
it's troubling you, brother. You're being tormented, but you don't want to live this way, do you? I didn't want this way since day one. Well, praise the Lord. There's help for you then in Jesus Christ. Help for everybody that will say, I Lord, help me. Minister, I called my minister on the phone. I said, do you think I want to be living like a homosexual for the rest of my life? Oh, no, Antoine, you don't want to be living. I said, I didn't want to be like this in the beginning. I don't love educational opportunity. I even graduated with no, with no high school, no diploma. They had me locked down in the EMH classroom. Now they call it ADHD. But back then, they call it EMH. It's the same thing. So let me ask you this. You're angry at what was done to you, aren't you? I'm so, I'm be honest with you. Let me be truthful and honest with you right now before God and before heaven angels. Because I really want to get revenge back to them really badly. Really badly. Now they tell me, well, the revenge belongs to God. Said That's what he said in his word. And you have to take it at his word. Well, 38 years gone, gone. Ain't nothing happened. You know? You know? The, you can't go back and redo the past. But here's what I want to ask you. God will deal with those that, that hurt you. But do you want to continue to be tormented? Or are you tired of this and you, you you want to stop the torment? Because as long as you continue in this lifestyle or I continue in mine, whatever sin we're involved in, it's not going to get any better. Are you going to allow the well, demons the to torment is, you for the next 40 I'm years? The question is, and it's like this, who got me into it? So whoever got me into it need to get me out. Am I correct? They're, brother, the, the people that uh, did that abused you, they're demonized. So why can't he get me out of it? Because if you put somebody into something, then you're responsible to get that person out. No, what I'm if saying is, is the, own, the the people that raped you can't help you because they need help. No, themselves. they can't help you. They I can't you, get you out. <laughs> there is one who can help you tonight. His name is Jesus Christ. Are you ready to put your past behind and let the Lord start to rebuild you? It's going to take some time. Sure it will. You think it was fair that at eight years old or seven years old, my parents set me down in the living room. My brother was five and said, we're divorcing. We want you all to decide who you want to live with. I had five different stepfathers. I had a stepmother that hated me. I was moved all around the country, moved four times in fourth grade. Well, uh, that wasn't uh, God's fault. It was the sin of my parents that were involved in rebellion and adultery. And you know what? We need to blame all, all this stuff on Adam and Eve. It's not God's fault. It's the devil's fault. And it's the fault of the people time, Adam, who yield to sin. at the same time, Adam and Eve had to pay for their crime. They paid for theirs. Um, Cain and Abel, Cain that killed Abel, Cain paid for his. But who is going to pay for my situation that I went through? Because God questioned Adam and Eve. Jesus Christ paid for it on the cross. Jesus paid the penalty for all of our sin. You've got to make the decision now. You, you don't want the torment to continue. And Jesus Christ can help you. He can help me. How he can help me when I've been crying out to Jesus Christ for 38 years? I'm just like the person at the pool of Bethesda waiting on him. I was at the gate of the beautiful, just like the guy waiting on him. And every time I go to a deliverance service, yes, the group of people cheering me on to get delivered, but yet those are the same people who helped me get the demons in. You resist the devil and he'll flee. You're in a battle for your very life. Are you going to keep fighting or are you going to give up? What do you mean? Well, you can make a decision. You can say, you know what? I'm just going to give up and then let the enemy destroy you. Or you can say, you know what? He's already robbed me of 40 plus years of my life. I don't want to be destroyed anymore. I'm going to fight back with everything I've got, even if it takes 25 years to get total freedom. It doesn't happen overnight. But don't get angry at God. He's the only one who can help you and I. 
How God could help me, he didn't help me since day one. He wants to help you now. Maybe you didn't want to be helped up until well, now. Not then. Now you realize you've lived you've lived in literal hell, haven't you? How old are you now? I'm I will be thirty me thirty nine years old. Thirty nine years old in January coming. The enemy so has robbed you of thirty eight years. He robbed me of almost uh, thirty five of mine. I finally got fed up with it. I said, I've got to make a decision. Am I going to fight back or am I going to let him take the next 35 years and take me to the grave? The choice is yours. Are you, do you want to surrender to the devil and just let him my go ahead choice, and finish his job? My choice was like this. My choice was like this. If, 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 that, if they cannot help me, then why did they didn't leave me alone? My choice was to live a life just like any little child, any little yes. boy, any little girl, how they used to live to have a good life. I didn't have that. Well, so everything was taken away from me building up their life here. You do understand. Now I'm living in the poverty while they're enjoying off the wealth that they got off of me. That's not the materialistic thing. This is just the per principle behind the whole matter. Y'all use and, and, and belittle me and take from me and rob me and rape me and did all this to me, and then God see it all. Word of God and says, I be not see God one time. Be not deceived. The word of God says, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. If they don't mm -hmm. repent, they're in some serious trouble. They've got the lake of fire coming for them. But the question Even is, is God you, said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek thy fist. Okay, if they've done that. This man, just not too long ago, he betrayed me after Understand all this. If he truly years. repented, he would come back to you and, number one, apologize. Have they done that? Ain't nobody can. I'm, can I share with, something with you right quick? Because my time is barely. I went to a deliverance service about two weeks ago. Um, God, I used my uh, spiritual mother in the service and pulled me up. God told me to close my eye and lift up my hand, and God said, praise him. I was praising God, you know, and God prophesied to me and said this. I know what you're going through. I understand what you're going through. God said, know that I love you. That's what he was telling me. Don't you know them saying ministers in the church? Then God up there in the tarry with me on the altar. I went back to the sit right back in my seat after I was praising God. You see where I'm coming from? Them same people who helped to put demons in me or the same people who talk against me behind my back is the main one was there and they even come up say, I'm sorry. Oh, forgive me. Not all of came up. Then it sounds you know they was dirty and wrong. Antoine, it sounds to me like they have not repented. Then God's going to deal with them. But are you going to let mm -hmm. them drain you of everything for the next 25 years? No, because I don't hardly see them. You and turn then, it over to Jesus. Home, don't you think that um, God is able to deal with them? He says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I shall repay. He knows how to take care of people. Some people may think that they escaped the wrath of God, the judgment of God. If they don't repent, they're not going to escape. Some even are in hell right repent, now. They're just even if they even after they repent, they still go ahead. Oh, well, God, don't forgive me. Oh, that that's on him now. If he hold that against me, he can't hold that against me because God, don't forgive me. That doesn't, mean, oh, okay. that doesn't mean that God still doesn't judge people. God may forgive you. If you, if you truly repent, you might still have to go to jail. If you've killed somebody, for example, he, he'll forgive you. He, I believe he forgave Jeffrey Dahmer, who put people in his refrigerator, in his freezer, cut them up. But he had but to go to jail. But he died in jail. You understand but yet what I'm he saying? still have to pay for all of those souls because even though God forgive you of killing, but you still have to pay the penalty for those souls. 
knows? Well, he paid the penalty according to world standard. He died in jail. Someone killed him. But I believe he accepted Christ. Now, that's Jeffrey Dahmer. You know, Ramirez, but on the other hand, he, he, he died and went to hell. He, he never repented. He, listen, what I'm seeing is this. You the, that's the man law, the law of the land. Okay. But you ain't pay according to God's law. Because after you die, you don't go to heaven or hell. You stand before the great right, right throne. Then that's just God would decide where your feet go at. Well, that's if you don't know Jesus. Yes, you go before the great white throne judgment. If you die in Christ, you don't go before the great white throne judgment. You go before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged on your works. But the Bible says once upon a man to die, he goes to judgment. To be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord in Christ, yes. If you don't know Christ, you're right. in hell. That may be true. But he says that his word, once a person dies, he goes to judgment. Brother Kyle, do you go to immediate judgment when you die? That's in um, book, um, that's in Paul's Paul ministry. Oh, we've already been written in the book of life. If we are born again Christians... We're not going to pay for our sins. Jesus bore the penalty on the cross for everything we've done, good, bad, ugly, everything. He bore the penalty. So uh, we don't have to be judged for our sins anymore because he bore that penalty. We don't have to pay now. He paid for us. That's why his body was marred beyond description, the Bible says in Isaiah, because he bore our sins and sicknesses. So he paid the price. I don't have to pay the price for my sins now. Now, there may be some natural laws. That if you break and run a stop sign, you're going to be pulled over and given a ticket. You might reap what you sow in that respect. Right. But he bore the penalty for my sin. That's right. Not to mention, Antoine, most people that do horrible things, most of them are not going to repent anyway. Straight as a gate, narrow right. his way, and few be that enter therein. You could be uh, you could be the world's worst axe murderer, killed 500 people, and if while you were on death row waiting to be barbecued, you came to Jesus Christ, you could repent. They still electrocuted him. He's in heaven because he repented. Now he probably doesn't have any reward when he gets there. Wasted their whole life. But, but you know, here's the problem, and we won't. We've got short time because we we got to do mass deliverance. You've already been hurt enough. Turn them over to Jesus Christ. Don't let those demons continue to be able to torture you because you will not release those people to Christ so that Christ can deal with them. You've got to forgive them. But God is able to uh, to heal you, brother. Heal me or anybody else out there, whatever we're battling with. You're battling with perversion spirit. There's someone else out there battling with cigarettes or alcohol or pornography are they any better or worse than you know they're bound up right now and being tormented but you know what you're further along than some people because at least you know you're tormented and you don't want to live this way do you and Jesus Christ is not ashamed of you all you've got to do is repent of your sin he forgives you and turn to him, brother, and it's going to be a process. Nobody said that you're going to be delivered overnight. But he is able to set you free. What do you think about that? I think we lost Antoine. Yes, we did. Yeah, I, I think, think you lost him. Uh, he's back. I see him. Antoine, I want you to hang on, on there. We're going to go right into some uh, mass deliverance. Antoine, are you still there? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you're back. I see you back on the switchboard. The, the, Hello? The, the, the question I want to uh, have you answer right now is, are you tired of being tormented by these devils? Yes, but with the, situ with the reason why I say yes is the simple fact is any repercussion going to happen towards the people who did it? Yes, vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I shall repay. Do you believe that 
God will keep his word? For 38 years, I ain't seen nothing. He will I'm repeat. waiting on him. What? I'm waiting on God personally to perform what he said he's going to do. What is 38 years in comparison to the next 10 million years if someone ends up in hell and they got away with it for 70 years and they died of a heart attack? There's people that have died tonight. They thought they... Maybe they didn't pay down here, but they're going to pay for eternity if they didn't repent. We're here just for a split second. Can you I ask you a question? So you talk about a split second. So you mean to tell me for all that they did to me, and you mean to tell me is that what gives them the right to take a child or anybody and do do that to them. Right now, as we speak, you got people, no kids being raped and being beaten as we speak. Gives them, what they gives have no, them the right? They have no right. They're full of the devil. They're like their father, the devil. Oh, they do things just like God their father, the devil. Watch all of that happens. God sit there and watch all of that happen, and didn't step in because he didn't step in for me. That's because of sin. If Adam had a sin, it would never have happened. But because of sin, the sin has a right in the earth until it's taken dominion over. But God had warned Adam and Eve. They choose. That's the life that they choose. After, before, before they even this happened, even happened to Adam and Eve, they were warned. Every so one of us choose. For, okay, did I choose homosexuality? No. How I got into this because this someone so knew homosexuality was wrong, but he took his Johnson and raped this little boy. Now this little boy become a man. Now, now he done been through all the sexual molestation, the beating, the rape, physical, sexual, and mental abuse, homeless, on drugs, on cigarettes, prostitution, everything because this person choose to do what he want to do with the low boy and he knew right I'm not blaming wrong. you for for what has happened to you. God's going to deal with all those that, that hurt you like they did. But you've got to make a choice right now. Are you going to choose to continue on in sin or are you going to say, I have, I've already been hurt enough. I want the pain to stop. I'm so I'm going question to ask Jesus is, to deliver me. The question is, I'm asking you, what sin that I need to repent of? Because if you think I'm going to repent for homosexuality, that ain't my sin. I'm only responsible for what Antoine I don't, does. I don't know Antoine what you're doing now. Are you still, are you involved in perverted acts now? Or is that a thing of the past? I'm still in perverted because of the homosexual lifestyle. Yeah, and what, because I've been I hear what you're saying. You're, you're battling because these it, demons, they torment, harass, and drive you to do these things, but you know that they're wrong. Let me establish that. Do you know that homosexuality is a sin like it? Like Alcoholism is a sin. Adultery, fornication. Do you agree? I agree 100%. That was a sin since day one when this okay. had happened to me. But you've got to make a decision. Knowing to do good and you do it to not, not to him it is a sin. Why are you going to continue to do that? You know it's wrong. You know you got to stop it, right? What? Are you telling me you're trying your best, but... You just keep falling back into temptation? Or are you saying, I know I'm doing what's wrong, but I want to do it because I like to do it? Me? Do you like to do like it, or are you being it. tormented by demons? And they're driving you to do that. Which is it? Oh, I didn't like this lifestyle in the beginning. I'm not talking like about the beginning. I'm talking about but now. Where are you at right, right now? Do you 
want to continue in the lifestyle that you're in, being tormented and destroyed? Answer me that question. No. Okay, praise the Lord. Brother Kyle, whether it be Antoine right now who has just confessed that he's tired of being tormented, tired of living like a homosexual, tired of being destroyed, and there may be someone out there that says, I'm tired of porn or being strung out on cigarettes or, or alcohol, or I'm tired of living in adultery, what do you say to them? What do they do next? Oh, I say that they just need to ask Jesus to take over their lives and repent for all, all sin, whether they blame it on someone else, but the fact is, you did it. So, whether you think no, somebody I ever forced that it. on you, that was, you that, still no, need no, to I repent did. for it. Well, sir, uh, you, I'm saying that you wrong that because I didn't did this sin. That whole, that person who raped me, the spirit that left his body along with the female companion of a cousin, that came directly into me. Okay. Yeah, but who's so doing it now? Oh, they're not, not doing it now. And you? Who, who's she, doing it now? You're the doing it. Look, you have a choice. No, you can't be the victim all your life and blame no, what happened 20, 30 years ago and be the I victim all your life choice. and blame them for your sin. No, you got to say, hey, hey, I'm doing it. I'm wrong. I need no. to repent. No. no. Even though they brought no, it on no, me. Because this is their sin. This is not my sin. I get a chance to commit my sin that I want to do. This is I what think you're self-deceived. Huh? Let me ask you this I think question. Deceived. You've got a you've got a young young person, baby. Antoine. I'm not the sea baby. You've got a young person, Antoine, that uh, hangs around with the wrong crowd, and they pass a joint to him. He was fine until he got around the wrong crowd. Now he's addicted to marijuana and cigarettes and or alcohol, whatever it is. Surely the person that introduced him to it has, you know, uh, was the, the the way they were introduced to the sin. They're going to pay for it if they don't repent. But now the person is doing this. They're going to have to make, make a decision. Are they going to continue doing this, knowing it's sin, or are they going to seek help and get deliverance so they can stop it? Now the choice is yours. You want to continue on the road to destruction, or are you going to ask Jesus Christ to help set you free so you're not tormented by these demons anymore? You don't live this lifestyle anymore. He can help you. That's where you're at right now. I right now to a point it's like this. God gotta perform what he said so I can believe him. So see I read his words, I have been delivered from service, I have demons been cast out of me, I done been through the whole blood washing ceremony. But yet those same folks sitting back there laughing and having a good old time while I'm being beaten up on the altar. Let me ask you a question. Why are you going to a church where the, the very people that raped you are there in the pulpits? You need to get out of there because, and get to the place because it sounds like they no, have not... I don't even them. go there. Listen, I don't even go there no more, but I'm just saying it's like wherever my spiritual mother preaches, that's my spiritual mother. I will not treat her for anything because God put her in my life. And so every time that she'll preach at a church service, nine times out of ten, they'll be there. And nine times and ten out of ten times, they don't be there at all. Okay. Okay, she just go from she under ministry, but she goes to church to church to preach. 
Let me get real with you right now. Whether you're battling with homosexuality or drug addiction, whatever it is, you've got to make the decision, I am tired of this lifestyle, I'm tired of being tormented, I need help. And if it involves someone you got to forgive, you've got to forgive them. So then, to get them an easy, uh, then easy that's, that takes away the legal rights of the demons, the tormentors, to come and attack you and also opens us up for forgiveness and, and for deliverance. Then you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ cry out. And he, he will set you free. That's the only hope. It's take or leave it. It's Jesus Christ and deliverance and freedom or we can be destroyed. There is no other option we can offer you. There is no option available to any of us. All I can see is that like God got the goal. God, God got to show me what he's talking about. Because see, I done waited on God for 38 years. I done, I done did the fasting. I done did the praying. I done did all the forgiveness. But if the man at the pool of Siloam had given up, he would have died. He did not give up, and his miracle came. I don't control the timing of God, nor do you. But I know that if you resist the devil, he will flee, and I know that God is faithful. But we cannot turn on the only source of help. I hear that all the time. Oh, God, has it healed me? So I'm just going to go back to the way I was living. To heck with the Lord. I heard that this week from a person that's being tormented that wants to commit suicide almost every single day. Now, that's pretty foolish. If we turn on the only one that can help us, there is no hope. Are you, are you a fighter, Antoine? Or are you just going to let the enemy kill you? He's already almost destroyed. Are you going to say, go ahead and finish the job? Is that what you're going to let the devil do to you? I've been fighting for 38 years. Well, then don't stop. Just to be here. Just, just, just to be alive. Just stand by right now. We're going to pray for you. We're going to go right into mass deliverance. You know, Brother Ka, I don't believe Antoine is going to give up. He's in a battle, and he's not happy. He's being tormented. But I believe he is going to make the right decision. We can't do what Job's wife said, curse God and die. If Job had cursed God, he would have been dead, and that would have been the last of his story. Or will we curse God and die, or are we going to keep the faith? even though it looks like we're going down. As my granny used to say, Brother Kyle, if you keep the faith, the faith will keep you. Brother Kyle, how about some mass deliverance? <laughs> okay, we got about eight minutes left here. So. And I've got a little time. If you need extra time, go for it. I'll leave that up to you. We're on your time. Go oh, for it. Okay. Yeah. All right. A little bit of deliverance here. Yeah, one, take it. Praise God. We're going to get some mass deliverance for all of us tonight. Go for it, Brother Cal. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get rid of some spirits tonight. You can be free if you want to be free. If you want to keep your demons, that's your choice, too. You have that right. You have a choice. God gives all of us a choice. And so right now, this is your opportunity to get free from some demons. And uh, listen, yeah, it's up to you. You want it, you're going to get it. You want to stay the way you are, you stay the way you are. But God loves you. He wants to set you free. So let's get rid of some stuff. Just, uh, let's go right into it. But I just give you a quick uh, prayer and then instruction. Uh, first of all, just say in the name of Jesus, 
I command every spirit in me that is not the spirit of the Lord to come out of me now. I bind and break every power of every demon in me and command you to go in the name of Jesus. I break every curse over myself in Jesus' name and cancel your assignment and command the spirits that have enforced this curse on me to leave me now in Jesus' name. I forgive each and every person who has ever wronged me, hurt me, done me wrong. Uh, By the grace of God, in the name of Jesus, I forgive them and release them from what they owe me. In Jesus' name, Lord, you will take care of them. All right, now, they're going to come out of your mouth coughing, sighing, burping, yawning, spitting, uh, vomiting. Uh, Just let them go, screaming, coughing. Sometimes they come out with tears, burning in the skin, burning of your body in different points. in different parts of your body, just let them go. All right, we prayed the prayer. Let's get it out. Let's work on the fear. We talked about fear tonight. We got God not giving us the spirit of fear. Remember what he gave us? Power, love, sound mind. Perfect love, cast out fear. Let's go, fear. Come out. All, all those roots of fear. Come out. In Jesus' name, come out. All, all that, that fear of judgment, fear that God is going to uh, punish you, fear that God's going to hurt you. God, come out of there. All those fear spirits, out, 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 all the way out. Go. In Jesus' name, fear. Fear that you're going to be delivered, um, I mean, evicted from your apartment. You come out. Out, 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 all fears. Come out. All that fear, go, 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 go. Fear that you're not going to have enough. Come out. Come out of there. Out, 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 out. I fear that you're going to fall back into sin. You, just by giving place to that fear, you will fall back into that sin. Because you're giving place to that fear. Fear has the ability to bring you back into that sin because of what you're fearing. Because Job said, what I have feared has come upon me. What I have greatly feared has come upon me. So just by getting into that fear, you're allowing that to come back on your life. Now come out of there, all that fear, out, 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 out. Come out in the name of Jesus right now, all that fear. Come out. Fear that you're going to fall back into that sin trap. Fear that you're going to say things you don't want to say. Come out of there right now. All that fear. Come out. Out, 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 out. Fear of being hurt. Fear of being rejected. Fear of being mocked and put down. All, all fear. Come, come out. 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 Come out, come out. Fear of being intimate. Come out. In Jesus' name. Go, 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 go. Fear of cussing. Come out, come out. Fear that you're going to cuss. Come out, come out, come out, come out. Fear that you'll be shy and you won't be able to be bold for Jesus. Fear. See, when you give place to that fear of any kind, you're going to. You're to perform what that fear is because you're giving place to that fear and therefore that fear has a right to do its work in your life. That's why we've got to get it out. Come out. All fear. Go, 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 all the way out. By the blood of Jesus, come out. All, all fear. Come out. Come out, 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 come out. Fear that you're going to be uh, mistreated. Fear that you're going to be abused. 
come out in Jesus' name. See, when you give in place to these spirits, then you give in place to these things happening in your life. All right, go, 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 go. Come out. All fear. Come out. Fear of losing your mind. Come out. Fear of getting Alzheimer's. Come out. Fear of cancer. Come out. Come out. Fear of mental illness. Come out. Come out. Fear of going crazy. Fear. Come out. Out. Anxiety. Come out. 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 All fear has to go by the blood of Jesus right now. Go, 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 go. Up and out of there. Go all the way out. All the way out. All the way out. Fear going in a mental institution. Come out in Jesus' name. Go, 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 go. Fear you'll never have enough time to get it done. Come out. 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 Come out of there. All the way out. All the way out. All the way out. All the way out. Fear you're going to lose your mind. Come out, fear of being hurt. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out of there. By the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, go, all fears, go, 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 come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. The blood of Jesus is against all this fear. We rebuke the spirit of fear. All fear in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, by the blood blood of Jesus right now. Go, 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 go all the way out, all the way out, all the way out. All spirits that are manifesting right now, you come out. In Jesus' name, I bind you. Go, 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 go. Spirits of unforgiveness, go, 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 go. Out, 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 out. All unforgiveness, go in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus. 90 the blood seconds. Of Jesus right now, go. Go, 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 all the way out, all the way out, all the way out of there. Come up out of there, all, all those fear-based spirits, fear family spirits. You have to go in Jesus' name. All that vengeance spirit, wanting to take revenge on somebody, you come out of there. you got to give that up. That's God. He's going to do that. You don't do that. God's going to do that. You give it to God. God will take vengeance. He will deal with those who hurt you. you got to deal with yourself. you got to sins in your own life. And if you never admit that you're sinning, when you're doing the things, even though somebody else may not got you started on it, you're still the one doing it. So if you don't deal with with you doing it, and you don't repent for you doing it, uh, and you blame the, the other person the rest of your life, and you just take on that victim mentality spirit, uh, then you're going to stay in that sin forever until Jesus comes. All right? Until you t- take responsibility for what you do, doesn't matter who got you started in it, no matter who raped you, who hurt you, who did you wrong. Uh, you could say that all your life and blame somebody else and, as an excuse to stay the way you are. You know, that's not going to do anything for you. That's just going to keep you in bondage. But when you say, hey, I hate doing this. I know somebody else has got me started, but I'm still doing it. I don't want to do it anymore. I want to be free. God Ten set me seconds. free. God set me free. I admit it. It's sin. And I, I hate it, and I don't want to do it anymore. I, I know somebody else got me started, but hey, I shouldn't be doing this. This is wrong. So, Father, deliver me. Father, I repent for it. Deliver me. See, then you can start getting free. But as long as you just keep blaming somebody else, you'll never be free. Never be free. You'll do it for the rest of your life because you're blaming somebody else. You, you don't have to take responsibility. It's their fault. All right. Well, there are plenty of demons associated with that, too. You know? Come out. In Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, right now. Go, 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 go. All the way out. All the way out. Self pity. Come out. Come out. Come out. 
come out of there all the way out, all self-pity, all false suffering, false humility. Go in Jesus' name, penance. You come out of there right now, spirit of penance, doing penance for you. Sin. When Jesus already bore our sin, we don't we don't sins. We don't have to do penance for our, our sins. You come out of there, spirit of penance, doing penance. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. I gotta pay for my sins. Look what I've done, and I gotta make others pay for what they did too to me. You come out of there right now. All that penance, spirit. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. By the blood of Jesus, right now, by the blood of Jesus, go, loose them and let them go. By the blood of Jesus, all that penance, come out, come out. Spirits of defilement, unclean, defiling spirits, go in Jesus' name, go. All that sexual defilement, go in Jesus' name, go. Go, oh, wounded spirit, defilement, go in the name of Jesus right now. Go by the blood of Jesus. Go, 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 go. All defilement, go. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Spirit of rape, spirit of sexual defilement, sexual perversion, unclean. Come out, come out, come out, come out. Hurt that came with the defilement spirit. Come out. All that hurt, come out, 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 come out. The blood of Jesus right now against all defilement, all sexual defilement. Go in Jesus' name. All that suffering spirit that make you suffer for all your life for sins that have happened to you or things that people done to you. That suffering spirit, you come out. Come out of there, that false suffering spirit. Go, 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 go. Makes you think it's God that's making you suffer. Come out in Jesus' name. Go, 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 go. Go. All that false suffering spirit it tells you God has that for you. God is making you suffer. God, because it's your fault that such and such. To you, it's your, your fault. You got, got raped. It's your fault. You got abused. Come out. 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 All the way out. Jesus' name. Go. 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 All the way out. All that suffering spirit. Go. All that false suffering spirit. All that penance. All the way out. All the way out. All that condemnation. It tells you you deserve it. You might as well just suffer because you deserve it. Come out. 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 Out of there. All the way out. Go by the blood. Of Jesus, right now, go, go in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Keep coming out of there, all the way out, all the way out, all the way out of there. Come on, all those religious spirits to go in Jesus' name. Religious spirits that tell you, yes, you have to suffer. Oh, yes, because of you, it's your fault. Come out of there. In Jesus' name, go, 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 go. Yeah, all that self-blame, blaming yourself. Come out. Come out of there. All that self-blame, blaming yourself. It's your fault your parents got a divorce. It's your fault that you were mistreated by your children. It's your fault that they... Don't want nothing to do with you. Come out. Come out. In Jesus' name. Go. Go. You did did something wrong. You didn't raise them right. You didn't do this. Hey, listen, we we all all did did the best we could at the time, and many of us, it wasn't that great. Okay? But, you know, we have to move on from where we are right now. God is not blaming us. We need to be blaming ourselves. Come 
out of there right now. Go, 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 go. All the way out, all the way out, all the guilt, all the pain. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out, 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 come out. All that spirit of it's my fault. You come out. It's my fault. It's your fault. Come out in Jesus' name. Go, 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 go. All that self blame. Come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All that defilement. You defiled yourself by blaming yourself. You come out. That self blame. That self defilement. Come out. 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 Come out of there, all the way out, all the way out, all that self-unforgiveness of self. Come out. Can't forgive yourself. It's my fault. Look what I did. Look what I did. It's because of what I said. It's because of what I did. It's because I wasn't good enough. Come out. Come on. All those lying spirits. Go, 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 go. Come out. Keep coming out. Come out. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We command all that memory recall. They keep bringing it up over and over and over. Go, 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 go. All that memory recall. You come out of there that brings up those memories, brings up those thoughts and those condemning memories of the past. You come out. Memory recall. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. All the way up. All the way out. All that memory recall. Bringing up those memories. Come out. Jesus' name. Go, go, go. Always bringing them up when you start, and then you get into depression or you get into that mood again. You come out of there in the name of Jesus right now. Go, 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 go. All the way out. All the way up out of there. Go. Move, 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 move. By the blood of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right. Well, we're winding it up. Short deliverance time tonight. But Father, we thank you for this deliverance. We ask you to just seal it to your saints that received. And we thank you for setting them free and continuing to set them free. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for greater and greater victories, Lord, and greater and greater liberties in the days ahead, Father, that because this is a progressive walk that we're on. And we are making progress from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. Is the way we walk this, Lord. And we thank you for victory in Christ Jesus, that every demon now is another victory for our lives. And so, Father, we thank you for each. Each and every victory, each and every demon out, is one less that we're carrying around. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise God. I'll wind Thanks. it up. I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. We've been live with Pastor John Kyle. Brother Kyle, I would like you to give out your contact information, tell people how they can support your ministry, and... Uh, also get in contact with you. Oh, okay. Brother Shannon, thank you for having me on tonight. Appreciate it, brother. Great words. It's uh, been, a, been a blessing. All right, yes, uh, our website is theoasisplace.org, theoasisplace.org. You can go there and... and, and uh, Look at the material if you'd like to order material, or you can uh, also uh, support the ministry there as well, if you desire to do that. Uh, also, you can email me, theoasis1 at localnet.com, theoasis1 at localnet.com, mailing address. Is the Oasis Church or Pastor John or Linda Kyle at P.O. Box 50162. That's P.O. Box 50162, and that's Billings, Montana, 59105. That's 59105. All right, thank you, Brother Shannon, for having me on with you tonight. Good to be back with you. Great.
Great to have you back on, Brother Kyle. Now, Brother Kyle, how can someone email you if they'd like to reach out to you that way? Uh, yeah, the email is theoasis1 at localnet.com. Theoasis1. The number one at localnet.com. I also want to encourage people to support Omega Man Radio tonight. That's important that uh, uh, he continues his work that God, God has placed him in. So uh, just to encourage encourage everybody to support Omega Man Radio as well. Brother Kyle, one other bit of information we need from you for some new listeners out there. If someone would like to write you, uh, do you have a mailing address? Yeah, mailing address is the Oasis Church or Pastor John Kyle at P.O. Box 50162. That's P.O. Box 50162. Billings. Billings, Montana, MT 59105. That's 59105 is the zip code. Praise the Lord. Brother Kyle, we love and appreciate you. And Sister Kyle, thank you for the work you're doing. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you next, next Friday. All right. Lord willing, we'll see you. See you too. God, God bless, bless you, my friend. Bye-bye. Bye. Praise the Lord. Folks, I hope you got to hear tonight's message. If you did not, it's going to be up in the archives here in a bit. Uh, listen, I've got a lot of uh, stuff coming up this month, a lot of great programs. If you enjoy tonight's program, we have Brother Kyle on every Friday night. 7 p.m. Eastern. I'd like to encourage you to uh, tell your friend about this Friday night program. Tune in. Um, let me just kind of give you a rundown of what's coming up here on Omega Man Radio. I spent the last couple days really working to um, book some guests. So, so let me give you kind of a preview of next week. Let me just log into the computer. I also want to say something as I'm pulling this up. And, and uh, that is, folks, that I'm hearing from all around. The enemy has just hit me hard. People tell me. You know what, I've never been hit so hard in my life. Uh, uh, maybe you would say the same thing about your, your situation right, right now. Uh, I know that I've been getting hit really hard. I, I know I got hit really hard before tonight's program. I said, where did that come from? But you know what? One thing I'm going to say, which I think you will, that will bear true and you'll agree, is you know what? Every day, folks, we're one day closer to heaven if we will not faint. You and I cannot afford to let the enemy get us angry at God, to curse God and die, to give up, up on Jesus. What do we have left? Are we going to let the enemy destroy us and send us right into hell? You say, but you don't understand. Someone raped me. Someone stole everything that I had. They disparaged me. They walked out on me. When are they going to get there? Uh, theirs. A judge of mine said, Lord, I shall repay. Folks, so what do you want to do? You want to hang on to that? 
You want to give those demons legal rights? Because if you don't forgive, Jesus says, neither will my Father in heaven forgive you. And if you let the sun go down in your wrath, Satan comes and sows those tares, which are demons. They're the tormentors. They're unleashed. Until you and I release that person or we die. Are you going to let these demons continue to torment you to your dying breath? Then you didn't repent and forgive. The person that hurt you didn't forgive. Now both of you are in hell for eternity. And now you're not getting out. And the only one that won was Satan. Are you going to hang on to your pride and your hatred? and let it destroy you in the process? Are you going to let it get you bitter to where you have cancer and arthritis coming and they kill you and they have to carry you out in a pine box, a body bag, as some have already went out for the time? Are you going to let it send you to a hell? So you thought your last 38 years was hell on earth. Now you're going to spend an eternity in hell because you wouldn't forgive? That's just foolishness. We cannot afford to do that. We cannot afford to get angry and curse God and die. Because we turn our back on the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father. There is no help for you and I. Just a certain fiery judgment. What I'm here to say to you is this is war. This is the Super Bowl of the end times. This is the ultimate battle. Don't be surprised at the fiery trial that is coming in your way. Word of God talks about it. It's a given we're going to be attacked. The enemy knows his time is short. He's pulling out all stops. He wants to get you and I to the point where we just give up and say, go ahead and finish the job. Go ahead and kill me. Are you going to be a quitter? Are you going to let the enemy rob you of eternity with Christ? Stakes are high. It's your choice. But I'm here to tell you, we cannot afford to let the enemy destroy us and send us right into hell. Don't give up, is what I'm saying tonight. The stakes are too high. It's eternity with Jesus Christ. And you can see your loved ones who have died and went on home be with Jesus, or it's the lake of fire. You've got to choose. I've got to choose. Which will you choose? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. As Dr. Hansen once said, told the testimony of a man who had been suffering with an affliction and laid in his bed for about three years. He, he was just about ready to curse God and die. And then he finally dawned on him. You know what? Satan didn't help me get out of here. And the only one, nobody else helped me. The only one that can help me is Jesus Christ. If I turn my back on him, I am screwed. That's what it boils down to. Jesus is our only answer. And he is able to perform his work. problem really you, you and I problem is that we haven't sold out problem is we like our sin problem is we're not really desperate enough I hear people whining all the time but are they willing to do something to change the situation 
I've talked to some. There's a church literally 25 minutes from them. Hop in a taxi. Hop on the bus. Hop on the train. Get over and get your deliverance. The Lord's waiting on you. And I know others, They it would take them 25 hours by car to get to a local church. How desperate are you? But you don't understand. Jesus understands, and I think you do too. You've got to make a decision. You're at the crossroads. Are you going to live or die? Live or die. The choice is yours. I'm here to tell you, I'm not going to die and go to hell. After what the enemy's put me through, you think I'm going to give up and let him just destroy me? Heck no. And I don't think you will either. I think you're a fighter out there. But we have to fight. Because this is war. And the stakes are high. I think that's my micro sermon. And I have no more to say. <laughs> so let me go back to my schedule. I think you got my point though how desperate are you how desperate are you to be delivered are you willing to forgive those that hurt you that wanted to destroy you that raped you that cheated on you that uh, walked away from you if that's what it takes to be delivered are you willing to go all the way and let them go or do you hate them so much that you, you want to see them destroyed and you're willing to destroy in the process that sounds pretty foolhardy to me nobody's worth going to hell over nobody's worth going to hell over So forgive and sell out to Jesus. Let, let him set you free. He's the only one who can do it. Well, back to my point. Let's see. Coming up. We've got some great stuff next week. Let me tell you a little bit about what's going on next week here at Mega Man Radio. Okay, I've got the schedule. All right. Uh, Monday, Monday night. Seven PM. We're going to have, have Pastor Joey followed by Mark Machado. Tuesday is going to be one long day. It's going to be a good one, though. We're going to have Henry Groover live with me at four PM Eastern. It's going to have to be early day for Henry Groover. He's a busy man, but we're going to get him on here and he's got some great testimony last time he was here he was getting ready to go to Korea and do prayer walking along the DMZ zone then we're going to have Emmett Overton at 5 we've got Peter and Verley Hobson live from Australia from 6 to 8 followed by Al Cuppet followed by John DiGiacomo that's all on Tuesday I've got Mel Novak 7 to 9 p.m. on the 11th followed by John Ramirez on the 12th, we've got Alan McManus from London, England, from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern, followed by Augusto Perez with Larry Taylor from 7 to 9. And Arch Bonima, that's on the 12th. The next Friday, Brother John Kyle. 16th, we've got Pastor Ida Moody of Guadalajara. The 18th, we've got uh, John Gogan and Ivory Hopkins. The 19th, we've got Scott 
Lathrop for two hours taking your phone calls, along with Gene Moody, Brother Cal on the Friday. We've got Greg Evenson coming up on the 23rd, Mel Novak back on the 26th. Uh, next month, we've got Pastor ID, Gene Moody, Ivory Hopkins, Scott Lathrop. Um, scheduled, and that's just for starters. I've got a lot of surprises for you. I've uh, put uh, contact out to uh, Quill. We've got Brother Quill coming on. We're going to have Nathan Liao. We're going to have Tom Horn, which is a special guest. Terry Cook, Stan Johnson, Brother Dan Caitlin, trying to get the Hawk back. We've got V, the Gorilla Economist, for the first time on this program. Give us a financial update. I've got Benjamin Brook coming back on. I've got Benjamin Brook and Augusto Press coming back on together. Um, We've got Jeffrey Nyquist, who's an expert on coming events, military. I've got all kinds of stuff. My goodness, that's just for that's just I guess uh, appetizer. We've got a lot of great stuff up this coming up this month. You don't want to miss the archives because a lot of stuff is going to be put right into there. Uh, bonus. We've got Win Warley. We've got Charlie Holtz. We've got Don Basham. We've got, um, uh, who else do we have out there? We've got the Johnny Barr. All these archives, they're getting ready to be activated and thrown in, thrown into the pile. So um, with that, stay tuned. And um, check out the upcoming show. List. If you said, wow, that's just too much to write the notes down, I'm actually putting it in in real time over there on Blog Talk Radio so you can find out about, about what's coming up there. Or add me as a friend up on Facebook, Mega Man Radio, and uh, I will also be announcing uh, some of these upcoming things. A couple other quick announcements. Uh, Last but not least, this weekend, there are some deliverance workshops uh, happening maybe in a city near you. Let me tell you about them. Okay, Pastor Charles J. Castello, the Ministry of Salvation. Uh, you can go to his website, theministryofsalvation.com, is having a deliverance workshop conference in Oxford, New Jersey, at his church. Special guest is Pastor ID. If you're within driving distance from New York, you can get over to Oxford, New Jersey, and meet Pastor ID, Brother Charlie. I understand there's going to be some special guests there that are in the chat room tonight. That's all I'm going to say. If you'd like to go out there and meet them, uh, they're going to be doing personal deliverance, mass deliverance, great fellowship. Um, get out there to the revival. It'll be this weekend. Okay, I'm looking for my show notes here. Uh, let's see what else we've got. We've also got... Um, A conference coming up this weekend with Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Okay, here we go. Got my notes ready now. So December 6th to the 8th, all weekend, Pastor Charles J. Costello mentioned that. The Ministry of Salvation.org. Um, the phone number to dial if you want more information is 201 803 
201-803-3083. Let me give that to you again. 201-803-3083 in Oxford, New Jersey, Ministry of Salvation. Okay, then Apostle Hopkins is going to be in Tampa. He's uh, there tonight through the 8th, all weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, at True Worship International Ministries in Tampa, Florida. Go to trueworshipim.org, trueworshipindiamike.org, or dial 813-247-2360, 813-247-2360, for more information on that. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have to say. I'm going to be putting some new archives up in the... Uh, In the um, I'm going, going to be uploading some new episodes to the archives. There we go. I got tongue tied over the weekend, so look into the archives for some special programs this weekend. Uh, the return of Brother John's Gospel Hour is going to start this weekend. I'll be putting that directly into the archives. If you didn't get a chance to call in tonight, I want to encourage you to be a part of the Ministry of Salvation. They meet Monday through Sunday, 8 a.m. every day. You can call and get some prayer, get some fellowship. Uh, also, we have a number of ministers that are on this program that are having um, ministry live from their churches every week. We've got uh, Brother John Terrell, who has mentioned that you can be part of his Internet church, meets every Sunday. We've got uh, Joseph Jasinski, Promised Land Ministries, that meets every Friday night. I think they're live right now at JesusDelivers.com and others out there that are starting home churches, internet churches that you can be a part of. Check out Consuming Fire Radio Network, Mike Bradford. Some great music and messages. Check out The Soul Man. He's back on Spreaker. And also check out his music on Reverb Nation. And uh, with that, I want to say thank you for tuning in tonight. This uh, intro comes from Zoe Mort. I want to say thank you to Zoe for creating this. Here we go. I still see a lot of you out there. That must mean that you want more Omega Man Radio. Well, I'm here to please, so I'm going to give you one of those bonus broadcasts tonight. We're going to go to a quick break, and then I've got a sermon up here for you. Some of you may have heard it, B.H. McClendon Soldiers, but some of you may not have, and this may be just the sermon.